Okay. We're going live early. We're three minutes early, but but you know what? We're right on time. Welcome. Welcome, Dangarinos, to another Dengus Alpha Odyssey stream. What can I get you? Thank, uh, you, can, you can get me some Levin brandy if, if you could, ma'am. Yes, I, I'm here at the bar at the local station just imbibing myself with a you know, small libation before going out to do a little bit of alpha exploration. And actually today, um, I've got something that I am very interested to show you people. And if you did see um, this morning, I put out the, the sort of finale episode for The Killer Detective. Um, 07, by the way, um, Dark Heavy 8, uh, Joe, I can't pronounce it, Sh Shmalfahor? Sh did, I, did I butcher that? Sh Sh Shmalhofer? Shmalhofer. Shmalhofer. Okay, I got it. I got it. And Ray Mobula and Commander Phil Barnes. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, but yeah, if you did see, this morning I put out uh, the finale... Oh, and Morgan Langley, hello. Welcome to the stream. I uh, put out the, the final episode in the Killer Detective Saga. Uh, I won't spoil anything, but it's uh, all about, um, you know, Spatula heading down to Alioth and confronting uh, Bill Turner to sort of, I guess, resolve their, uh, their differences. And, uh, it, you know, I was kind of timing this. Like, I, I really started this, this story arc... I want to say around, I don't know, like somewhere in the fall last year, whatever the killer detective, I think it was like October. I know the, the fifth episode, which was the one with Al Scorbius, was the Christmas episode. So I think it's, yeah, September or October is when that story arc started. And it's a nine episode run. Um, and I kind of timed it uh, to coincide with the Odyssey Alpha before I even knew there was an Alpha, to be honest. But uh, time it around. Oh, what's up, G Vine? There you are. Um, but yeah, I, I was uh, timing it with. Um, uh, the alpha so that I could hopefully get some footage of the um, a sort of new state of things in Alioth. And I was a little bit disappointed to find out that the Alpha Odyssey had, um, you know, a mini bubble. And I was really banking on phase four, allowing us to get outside of that mini bubble and go off explore the, the you know, the rest of the cosmos. Fortunately, that was not the case. However, however, something slipped up. And if you actually look on the gal map, you are able to go to any permit locked system that you have the permit for, provided that you have the jump range. And so you can go to Seoul, you can go to Alioth, you can go to Sirius, as long as you have the permit and you can get there, um, either you know jumping from another permit locked system to Leapfrog, you can get where you need to go. And so I was able to go to Alioth and see Bill Turner's base, and uh, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to check out as many of these permit lock systems, the Soul System, Sirius, Beta Hydri, Alioth, uh, Vega, and Ross128 are the ones that I know I can get to, um, as well as Xbur. And Shinrata, um, I might, if I can find some Neobium, or, or if uh, maybe just um, a minor jump range increase can get me there, we might be able to go to the Founder's World. So, without further ado, let's go check out some stuff that we're not supposed to see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and also, I'm not sure, it, I think the last stream I, I was doing was on the new um, system, but it is looking beautiful. And I'm not sure if, again, there are further updates, like this station, even though it looks like every other station has some nice blue lighting. I was in one earlier that had some nice green lighting. Of course, Sleepy Pete is, uh, you know, an institution around these parts. Um, but uh, it just looks so nice. Like, um, I'm... Uh, help the good guys get even and earn a few credits, step on up. Step on up. All right. I don't mind if I do. Um, but yeah, now on the old system, I was having a little bit of trouble running it, and they've... Sir? You okay? Is there something, is there something up there, sir? What are you looking at, sir? It's just a blue ceiling. Or, or is, or maybe it's like uh, an impressionist painting. Maybe that's the. This is the Van Gogh exhibit, Space Van Gogh. Or no, who, who is impressionist? Monet. Oh hi! Is that Dark Heavy Eight? Well, hello, sir. <laughs> I jump, but I can't jump. I can only do the crouch walk. Who's that? That's that's a commander. But I can tell by the way they walk. What is that, Commander? Le, st hold still so I can know who you are. Um, but yeah, actually, Dark Heavy, if you want, uh, let me send you an invite to a, a, a quote-unquote team. Or wait, can you not do that from foot? Can I not, can I not do that? Oh, wait, here you are. 
I will invite you to the team. And of course, anyone else who would like to join up, feel free. Uh, I am streaming in open on the alpha. And, um, you know, come kill me if you want. I don't care. If you can. Now, Dark Heavy, if you want to come with, then either you're going to have to come into my ship uh, with me, or you're going to have to bring your own little Jumpaconda or something. I've got a 50 light year range um, jump, a, jump a diamond back. <laughs> Commander Schnitzelbeater. Look at that face. <laughs> That's the new salute, eh? It's just the whole, like, go up and, and crouch. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, the new lighting does look nice. I am still really hoping that in the full launch there's a little bit more station variety. I actually, it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but I feel the stations are too efficient. Like, you know, they're, they're, only every only what you need is in the station. And I would like you know, to go around a corner and find a corridor that leads to a dead end and just has, you know, a spinning fan or something like that. Oh no, Dark Heavy, what happened? But, um, you know, I, maybe that is something. It does kind of feel like this alpha was like an early build of the game that was like partial. Like, there are clearly things that are not done. And, and like, to me, like, that man looks like he needs a nap. Yeah, talk to, talk to Sleepy Pete, right? If you need nap techniques. Hello. <laughs> Bend and crouch. Hello. <laughs> I can't, this, is a, this is a new profession, is just to stand by the elevators and just be the the station welcomer hello sir welcome to uh what station am i on does it say anywhere uh welcome to a hey, where'd everyone go what do i smell all right fine uh but yeah it actually took me a little bit of <laughs> to figure out because i happen to have three diamondback explorers <clears throat> and unfortunately when you're um you know going through your ship list in the uh sort of summon ship menu you don't really get the um uh, specs of each ship so i just ordered all my diamond backs here and then had to go in them each one at a time to figure out which was the one that had the 50 light year jump range that was highly engineered my little interbubble transporter and before we just get on um uh i absolutely love the 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 scale of the ships and the diamond back is one of my favorite ship designs i do love these sort of um, weird uh, nacelles that sort of fold up and just being able to walk around the ship this is this is the dream people this is what we've been waiting for all right without further ado let's get on this damn ship can I get under here oh no I'm gonna crawl under my ship I wonder what this looks like in camera mode uh, let's go down a little bit yeah see even there there's some good headroom there Welcome to underneath my ship. <laughs> All right, enough fooling around. And yeah, Dark Heavy. If you uh, hopefully you've got a ship that can that can jump. Otherwise, um, I wonder now if I were to invite someone from the cockpit to multi crew. Oh wait, there is no. Interesting. So there is no way to say um, you can only join another ship in in multi crew. You can't create a multi queue session is that is that right like i guess the way you do it it would be here but invite to team but how do you like get them on your ship and if i wanted to join multi crew then how would anyone be out there doing multi crew for me to join i guess they're working on that anyway so what we're talking about here <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, the bubble, you know, the mini bubble is like all down here. It's just a little, you know, crappy area. But if you want to go to the soul system and you have the jump range, it will plot a distance. But what it can only do is jump to permit lock systems. So you can see here that basically we're going to jump here to the sort of edge of the mini bubble uh, to Ross 263. And then one big long jump to Vega, which is a permit lock system. And from there to the cradle of humanity, soul. So, let's check out Soul first. I think, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff to see uh, in that system. Where do we go here? Invites, multi-crew. Yeah, come on in. Oh, wait, what's going on? Oh, the DBX only has one seat. It can't multi-crew. That makes sense. I, th I think I actually... <laughs> no! I went to the wrong ship. I didn't realize it was going to get transported. 
I do want to bring my diamond back because, uh, the th okay, the, w the weird thing I did find out, though, is that if you do die, because um, <laughs> this happened while I was in Alioth doing some uh, <clears throat> testing, uh, it will warp you back to the um, starting system in the mini bubble, and then you have to get your way all the way over there. Um, let's just see what multi multi crew is, is is like. Is this a little bit different? What what kind of ship is this? I've never been on this ship before. Is this a chief? Uh, one of the chiefers? I have never actually been on a, a chieftain before. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a cool cockpit. I haven't seen a cockpit like that. I do prefer, I think my favorite cockpit is um, the Crate series of ships. <laughs> I love Hollow Mies. Honestly, like, there's something adorable about the way that Hollow Mies, uh just look. What a pretty ship, though. It does look like a frog. So, I wonder now, if I'm in a multi-crew ship... Can I just, like, disembark from here? View gamer card. What do you mean, gamer card? You mean, I, I, I'm sure you must mean commander or pilot, not game gamer card. Gamer card? What, is this, what do you think, this is a game? It's like an enter the gunner role, or are these two... Okay, this is another thing. I really don't like the UI and how much it relies on unfamiliar iconography. Uh, okay, so I could repair the surface scanner, or the comp scanner. I guess that's all the multi-crew person can do, is just repair stuff. Repair turrets, okay. I guess maybe that's something they're not adding yet? The Alliance Challenger, thank you. Okay, I can't tell the three of them apart. So when I click enter the gunner roll, it still says unmanned, so they probably, this is probably all broken. Yeah, Dark Heavy, I'm going, I'm going to go back into my ship because... I don't want to break um, uh, the the multi crew thing is going to break. How do I actually do this? Uh, oh, I guess I have to leave the crew. Yeah, I can't just like go back to my ship. Maybe it's the card from the casino. <laughs> I will accept these rewards. Oh, actually, let's just see if there's anything new here. Uh, no, not really. Total trade tithe received. A tithe. What is this, like uh, medieval England? But Dark Heavy, what, what, is your, what is your jump range? If not, um, yeah, because I'm like, I don't have, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I do have my ass, but it's in Shinrata. If we can get there, I could, ooh, that's an interesting thing to try. Maybe I could get to one of these systems order a ship to me that has multi-crew capability, multi-crew you guys in, and then have you guys disembark to get into those systems if you can't jump there. That could be interesting. All right, but um, let's just refuel and repair. Why not? I don't know what I did to break my ship, but okay. It's uh, par for the course. And we're going to launch. And we can see here that um, access galaxy map to replot. Okay, I'll just pop in. Let it dither around for a second, and we have four jumps to the solar system. Yo, what is that fleet carrier called? Naughty Naughty! The, the, the SSS Pussy Willow. That would get you banned. I, this is the thing I don't understand, is I've seen the word, like, hell, like H-E-L-L, -L, get censored. When you type, when you, like, if you type, I think I named one ship, like, Hello World, Hello, world. Hello. Censored. Really? Really, Frontier? And yet, in Galnet, I have seen a little, little tiny doses of profanity, but I do find the uh, the filters really annoying. Can I actually turn them off? Like, do we have the option to be adults here and just, like, look at swear words? Yes, we do. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So I guess the Alpha must have put that back on. It is a little bit bizarre, though. Um, yeah, I guess I guess there's a, a reason for it, but and these new jump effects, man, um, man, I am going to consider doing a little exploration <laughs> when uh, Odyssey properly drops. Right now, it's kind of you know, you know, we got a mini bubble, and any discoveries are going to go back. But uh, let me see here, yeah, it's you to the team. Welcome to the team. 
But I love the Diamondback. Now, I will say, this is um, my sort of um, inter-bubble transportation ship, so if I ever want to get, like... Like, the way, the way I was really using this Diamondback is just engineer it for maximum jump range, and let's say I want to go to the, the Pleiades to... Um, oh, wait, G-Vine is here. We should say, uh, uh, help Thargoids and be friendly with them. Yes, in our, you know, Daka Daka assault ship with uh, <laughs> AX weaponry to help them find meta allies, yes, and feed them un unoccupied escape pods. Um, but uh, if I ever wanted to go to, say, the Pleiades and back, you know, I've got my dropship out there with its seven light year jump. It's like 300 jumps to the bubble. Um, I just pop in my diamond back, head down there, go play around with my fun little ships, and then uh, take the diamond back back to the bubble. Um, and actually, you know what? Before, so you look at this, a 49 light year jump. So if you don't have the jump range to get to Vega, you probably can't get to Seoul. But if you can get to Vega, there's so many permit lock systems um, in that area of space just that could be branched out from Vega. So it's all about that range. It's all about that jump range. Now, of course, we do have, um, let's see here, enough synthesis for a basic FSD uh, injection, but... We lack the Neobium for any of the more advanced ones. My god, every time I jump now, I get, like, that first feeling. Does everyone remember when they first played Elite and they made their first jump, how incredible it was, the, the experience of jumping from one system to another, and then you went on your first out-of-bubble exploration <laughs> trip? <laughs> I hate this now! Uh, no, I, I do think that the jumping in Elite is phenomenal. Now this is um, a permit lock system, and let's just see if there is anything interesting. I did a quick scan on um, uh, EDSM, just looking to see if there were any notable uh, locations at some of these places, and you know what they're all about. Misty River Surgery here. I'm kind of tempted to, yeah, you know what? Let's let's check this out. It's a space facility, so it's probably not going to be too different from. Um, anything we've not seen before, but I am kind of curious to see if uh, anything was changed in terms of um, some of the space facilities. Eh, gameplay, can you land on them? Can you walk on them? I don't know. Well, let's check it out. Might as well take a little deviation before we get to Seoul, because there are going to be a lot to see in Seoul. Mercury, and, uh, Europa, I think I'd like to land on both of them. Uh, is this the French Covass voice? I think it is. I think it is. I'm not sure if I can check that while I'm in the ship. I don't think you can access... Um, livery right now until you're docked, but pretty sure I put the French Covass in there. It was um, part of the um, uh, sort of uh, storyline with uh, Spatula is when he was you know flying around in the Cobras and Adders. They had the the French Covass. One of them had a German Covass, but of course you know um, Spatula has his own ship computer which he takes from ship to ship. Uh, Nova, of course. Uh, first jump scare in the hell out of you that started becoming so big so fast. Oh yeah, no, it's it's. Um, I think it was a hell of experience, right? Like you really uh, the 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 sort of build up and then the warp tunnel and then the the landing in the system. It incredible. It's you know, one of the testaments or the the greatest things in this game is when you're first starting to play it. That's what really I think hooks a lot of people. I still like jumping on near the southwest edge of the galaxy right now. Wow. Yeah, I've, I've never been to the Galactic Rim. Um, I'll tell you, I've been to <laughs> all these bookmarks <laughs> on the way to uh, Colonia. Most of them were from the Enigma Expedition. Um, and obviously Colonia is somewhere around there. I think it's, yeah, I think it's there. And I've been to Sagittarius, but I have never been all the way to like Beagle Point. I've never been to any of the Galactic... Um, rims and i understand that you know the further you get out the sparser the stars become so as you are drifting further and further down eventually finding a route uh to keep going becomes actually quite a quite a challenge right in this region of space how many stars are there there's none right now let's see if we can find a star out here a single lonely Gas giant would be nice. Oh, and by the way, uh, do let me know if the audio and the music mix is okay. I know on the last stream my uh, music was a little bit too much. Oh, wait, here we go. Here's some stars. Actually, this is not bad. This is not bad. 
But how many of these... Um, there might be an undiscovered wolf or yet, or a red supergiant or something in here. Because not many people make it out this far. Only the hardiest of explorers make it to this at region of space. Yeah, here we go. Now they get sparse. So, like... You really have to plot your roots in this region of space. Which I think is a, a cool part of the game, and that's like a natural challenge. Yeah, a novice. <laughs> a Nova, Nova Clovis. Well, funny enough, Nova's voice is... Um, so originally, I had this program called Voice Attack. And Voice Attack um, is like a plugin where you can say voice commands. So you can say like... Um, unlock hard points and it would undock the hard points um you have to painfully set it up but it's pretty cool i used to play with that a lot um just kind of dropped off music's very low okay i can i can raise the music hold on no no do not accidentally do this thing uh hold on i'm gonna low raise it to let's see maybe eight yeah, do let me know uh, if that mix is, is weird. Uh, and Ray, you've been beyond Beagle Point, Western Rim, and on the way to the most eastward part right now. Oh, from Distant Worlds 2, you're still out there. Damn. Oh, hold on, I want to see this. This is a nice gas giant. Very Jupiter-esque. Looks like a little wood-paneled station wagon. It's a, it's a pretty one. What to say. Um, but let's see, where, where are you, uh, Jivan? You're in Hypow. What is that? Hypow. I do really like now how um, these things will come. Did I miss a letter? Hypow. Hypow. A E C I O dash D. Oh, I O. Oh, maybe it's not. Not in alpha. Okay, yeah, but do, yeah, if you can hear the music, let me know. And so here is a Misty River Surgery, a nice little hospital facility. Oh, we got a satellite there. What data do you store? Look at this view, though. That is a nice view. <laughs> I gotta say, that's pretty cool. So I guess, like, why would you build a hospital out here next to a gas giant? What would, what would be the point? That kind of looks like a mail slot. Okay, I might need... <laughs> as I'm about to crash into the building. What would be the point of a hospital out here? Uh, does anyone know a doctor? Oh, shoot, what was that? What was that? What was that? What was that? Oh, I hit a, a girder. You really need to make uh, put lights on these girders. You need warning lights, people. You're not you're not building the code, okay? Okay, we're gonna get in the this mail slot. Oh, okay. It's not gonna open up, but it does almost look like there's a future plan to have little mini mail slots there. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is this uh, have we stumbled on the developer's secret plans, or am I just reading far too much into this? But I do love these, these space facilities. I think the only thing that, that you know, um, at this point is really needed is just, you know, some more gameplay with them. Uh, it is kind of cool that they added at some point beyond the ability... Oh, look at this. It's a nice little loading bay. Uh, they added the ability to, um, you know, like you get to one of these facilities and there might be someone attacking it. Oop, no, no, no. No, no, no. Turn off those darn points. No, 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 no. no don't, do don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Easy, easy now. Okay, stop moving. Stop moving. All right. Just want to get a beautiful, beautiful view of this amazing gas giant. And there we go, camera blackout. Um, I would like to complain about the camera blackout for the next 20 minutes because, <laughs> honestly, this is the stupidest thing. Oh my god, yeah, look at that, man. Like, what a view. Oh my god, I love it. I want to be on that station right now. I know, me too. I want to be in this little... I want to be in one of these little windows um, looking out on that gas giant and that view. Because this, this is something something that uh, I think this game does really well. is just these, these epic um, scenic moments. And then it ruins them with a shaky cam or <laughs> blacky cam. 
Like, look at that. That's like a shot from a, a sci-fi movie. Call Christopher Nolan! Let's shoot Interstellar 2 right now. My god. Is it just me or is this, like, facility moving quite fast? I don't know. Am I... Am I wait, is my ship just drifting? No. This facility just must be in a very high, high velocity orbit. But my god, this is what Elite is all about. Is just, you know, views like this. Oh, sorry, I'm like, I'm like internally basking right now. I can't even, I can't even process. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, and yeah, sorry if I, I've been uh, sporadically not looking at the chat here. Um, what PC did I get? Um, so I had uh, like a, a GeForce 970. Or is this, uh, yeah, 970. And I upgraded to um, an RTX uh, something 70, 2070. And you can only, you couldn't buy the graphic card on its own because they're just apparently sold out. So I got like a pre-built system. And hold on. It's like AMD Ryzen 7. <laughs> I'm reading off the box, which is halfway across the room. I literally was just like, okay, sort highest to lowest, because I've been saving up for this for three years, and then just went uh, you know, two or three down because <laughs> I couldn't afford the crazy ones at this at this company. Warp and a soul, by the way. Um and, and sort of just, you know, moved it, um, uh, you know, one or two down and found a system that, you know, had the, the right graphics card and pretty top of the line specs, something I won't need to upgrade for like eight to ten years kind of thing, right? Uh, until quantum computers come out. Absolutely, I would be so happy to be at that, at that hospital. That would be a great view from the hospital bed, right? But let's see if there's maybe some really nice views from uh, our own native soul system. So here is, you know, soul, a.k.a. the sun, a sun. And, of course, you have all these wonderful places. Soul is a packed system in, in even Horizons. Tons of tourist beacons and locations, and obviously it's the cradle of humanity. So we would have naturally colonized the solar system long before we even started with our interstellar um, space. But as you can see here, you know, it goes all the way... Oh! And you can't get on Triton because permit required. Of course. Now, interesting. Hold on. Wait a minute. If there's no permit required, then... Oh, yeah, see, of course. The moon, suitable for landing. No. No, no, no. Still won't let you land there, but it doesn't say permit locked anymore, which is interesting. Um, and I do wonder, like, you know, do they, what are their big plans for for the moon? Um, but I think the first thing to do is to go down and maybe let's check out um, Ehrlich City on Mercury. The closest planet to the sun. To me, it's amazing that in this game, humanity has colonized Mercury, which is, uh, you know kind of a crazy thing you know it's like a, you know venus maybe sure mars definitely and that's that that's not the capital of the solar system not earth anymore because according to the lore we really screwed up <laughs> screwed up the planet <laughs> had to move to mars and then only i guess more recently had we started the environmental restoration right but mercury mercury's far out there if you can colonize mercury you can colonize a ball uh, and Ray, you're saying you're considering to get a Corsair A7200 or Alienware R10 with a 370. Honestly, I wish I understood more about tech. I mean, I got a basic understanding, but like, you know, like there's just, you know, it's like, do you have a Western Digital Blue X506102? And I'm like, I, 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 I have, I understood the Western Digital part. <laughs> oh man, it's just, um... I guess I'm a little bit of um, a confused lad when it comes to, you know, the nitty gritty of the specs. But you know, I, you know, like every, like most people, I have a very computer savvy, tech savvy friend, and sent him the link and said, "What do you think about this?" And he said, um, "For that price right now, actually, that's pretty good." And I'm like, "Okay, good," because I I feel like vomiting when I think about how much this <laughs> computer cost me. <laughs> What's an irregular marker? Oh wait, I think we saw those before. They're usually like little drony things. 
But no, I want to see a city on Mercury. Which, of course, we've seen in Horizon, but with the new terrain generation, what will it look like? And once we get to the uh, once we get to Alioth, you'll see that clearly um, any of the sort of like hand placed locations, um, the train has regenerated around them, but they haven't been reconfigured because the developers did not expect us to be able to get into these systems during the alpha. So there might be some fun glitchiness. Oh, in the previous games, no, that that's not right, Gvine. I think the um, in the previous game, I swear there was a city on Mercury that I went down and, and visited. Um, yeah, this is the Ehrlich City. It's like one of the ring cities, right? That has like, um, uh, sort of like a nice little SRV raceway around them. I'm pretty sure. But, yeah, I don't know. It's, sometimes I can't determine whether it happened in my head or <laughs> it might have been one of my episodes. Therefore, who knows? Yeah, pre-built systems, 2,500. Yeah, that, that's pretty much uh, around the level that I paid, although it was in Canadian. Uh, but still, I uh, my hand was quivering, my knees were shaking, and uh, I, I nearly threw up in my mouth just spending that much money at once. I've never uh, spent that much money in one uh, one transaction before. All right, so here we are at Ehrlich City, and we got a proper city, and it looks like it isn't too uh, affected by the terrain, at least compared to an engineer. Although it does look like some of these uh, domes might be a little uh, under. The dust, but maybe they, maybe they, the dust just um, crept up on them, right? Oh, thank you for the terrain alert. I'm actually surprised I didn't smack into that dome there. And yeah, I do love the layout of these giant cities. So, you know, you can see, I guess the terrain generation is probably struggling in this place doesn't quite know what to do because you're not supposed to be here yet but um, I guess you know this isn't an engineer base so these are probably cities that are uh, you know sort of uh, within the realm of like they're not these aren't like hand plucked assets like this is just you can find these types of cities in many different locations do I have an SRV by the way no I don't Actually, would be a really good thing to get. I'll tell you what. Let's see if we can buy ourselves an SRV here. It might lower our jump range a little bit, but well, how convenient! They give me a jump pad right over here. Maybe we'll just take a little drive around Erlik City. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, stop your block. Thank you. Close enough. Uh, now, of course, you cannot uh, disembark. Um, now, actually, I learned this little trick from... Yeah, Canadian shekels. <coughs> uh, hold on, let me just see what you guys are saying here. I have a three-year-old laptop with a 1060. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, no people running around, no. I don't see anyone taking a walk. And certainly, um, I am an open, but I don't think many people can even consider getting out of here. Now, Plater was the one who actually saw this trick from. I, I watched his stream uh, one morning as I was getting ready to work. Thank you for that data. And um, I was like, oh my god, this is great. I can go to Alioth. And uh, I think he was saying the other night that uh, he had tried to land at a base at Mercury and found it was um, sort of inaccessible. Um, really hate the new UI stuff in Elite. I'm hoping they aren't... Uh, I guess attached to that. What am I looking for here? I'm looking for outfitting. Especially great docking. I mean, it has become uh, uh, something of a signature. <laughs> if I may show myself. That's, that's my excuse, right? It's like, no, I'm, I'm doing this intentionally for your entertainment. That's not lack of skill. That's uh, high skills in um, areas that you didn't even know this is another thing of like, what the hell am I doing here? Why do we need this? I just want to buy modules for the sake of buying modules. Oh, I guess uh, if you want to see how to get a 50 light year build. So, you know, even with burst lasers, I don't know why I have those on there for a jump, jump ship. Uh, heat sink, uh, yeah, like I've actually, a Xeno skin. What am I, what am I doing with this thing? <laughs> this is terrible. Um, 
Yeah, this probably could be even more optimized. I could probably get like a 70 light year jump range. Yeah, but I got a bi weave shield, a fuel scoop, a cargo rack. I've got my limpets because, you know, we need those limpets. And of course, we need to add a vehicle bay. So, what are we going to take out? Well, I kind of feel like uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe this collector limpet can go. Jesus, I, I really don't like this. Oh, is this all they have to sell? Are you kidding? They don't sell that stuff here? Oh, wait. They do sell it here. What is going on? I don't like that. Well, change it back. <laughs> I don't like this. Okay, let's just look at jump range. Um, interesting. So our jump range will actually improve if we go with this one. Uh, and it doesn't... It will affect our power priorities so we're gonna have to do something about that okay what we will do is go to our what have I done oh, I have to close this you have purchased a vehicle without any vehicle base okay fine let's go back and do that first Honest to God, I'm not not a fan. And I don't know if it's just like, am I just re having to relearn? But I do find like, you know, for someone who's played this, uh, sorry, been a, a commander in this universe for, you know, over five years, uh, I should be able to kind of figure out the iconography, but it's like, no, it's all new. And I don't know, it'll take years and years and years to get used to it. Oh, well. Uh, okay, so I think what we are going to do is we're going to put our uh, lasers here to uh, priority four. And um, planetary vehicle we'll put in priority two. Uh, fuel scoop can be priority three. Because if we're using one, we don't need the other, right? And um, sure, we'll find out what happens. We'll find out the impact of this later. Uh, what I would like to do, though, is take a little drive, um, test out this new SRV, check out check out these wheels, and see how much terrain we can rip up at this lovely, lovely Ehrlich city on Mercury. We are driving on Mercury. I have to say, like, um, shouldn't it be hot out, you know? Okay. All right, we are on the road. And so, I don't know if you, you guys... Um, I've been, uh, there used to be a lot of, like, uh, racing, uh, events, uh, Scorb would host a lot of them, where we would go to a place such as this one, and, uh, do a little SRV loop around the city, and it is nice to see, you know, to be able to do that in Odyssey, is like, you know, uh, in, you know, the future, you could get out of your SRV, and stand on the road, and get, um, totally run over by the racers, and, uh, that sounds like a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> All the new possibilities. Yeah, I know. It's, 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 it's just one of those things where, like, uh, number one, I'm used to it. But number two, I don't think I like the new ones. Like, I just don't think they, um... I don't think they, 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 they don't really look good. They don't make it more intuitive. They don't make it easier. I really hate when you put in, hold on, control F for frame rate? Sure. Uh, this is FPS uh, 50, is that good? I think that's good. Higher is better, right? Um, the outfitting is especially odd. You know, you know, the worst one is when you're trying to hand in a bounty. And you, I'll, I'll go, when I go back to the station, I'll, I'll go back to complain about this more. Ouchie. Yeah, usually this is where the races would would kick off. And oh look, they've added a little advertisement in there. Why would you put a billboard here? Like, this must be the cheapest billboard on the planet. It's like, who who sees that billboard? Hold on, let's just go into camera mode for a second. I'm curious, maybe there's like an office right there. No. Like, there's literally like two of those cargo bays. Oh, please, Frontier, remove those black. Who put that billboard here? Who is the <laughs> Who is supposed to see this? I hope the advertisers are not paying a lot of money. That's like like a banner at the bottom of the site. Uh, anyway. 
The old one is much more efficient. No, I agree. And yeah, I'm sorry if I'm making you jealous there, Lude. Um, believe me, I, I have suffered a potato for years and years and years. And I remember I got Star Citizen. And, you know, kind of like was talking about it with Scorb. And, you know, he wants to make some Star Citizen videos. And I'm like, it just, I, I can't even run it well enough. It's not enjoyable. It, it, it doesn't look good. I can't get great quality footage um, unless, you know, uh, I sort of put all the settings down and really just don't touch much. I think there's supposed to be a road here. Maybe the maybe the road starts over here. Maybe it's a little bit buried. Yeah, I'm kind of doing this racetrack that I have like a mem muscle memory for from all those uh, Ascorbius races. But it is nice here uh, to be you know, just in this crazy domes. Oh, you know what I want to do? Oh yeah, I know what I want to do. We're gonna we're gonna climb. We are gonna climb here. Oh. Okay, that was a unexpected bump. Okay. Yeah, you know what? It, 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 I think they just overcomplicated um, the bounty hunting like redemption system. And it's like, it doesn't need to have 15 different sub-menus, right? We'll, 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 we'll get there. We'll get there. We're going to climb first. We're going to see how high we can go. And then we'll talk about how low, how low we feel about um, some of these UIs. And again, it's like, there's, there's some things that I do like um, in the UI. It's not all terrible, but um, I definitely find myself struggling with it or struggling to uh, really enjoy it okay that's an interesting bounce that was a really big kickback <laughs> I mean maybe I could use that to my advantage while climbing okay also what is this blue uh, sort of thing here and why can't my SR okay it might have also reset some buttons what's going on okay no 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 that is a shield we are driving on the shield. Let's do external cam here. Uh, let's just get back here. Okay. Blue. So, like, seriously. Okay. We are literally just climbing the air. The dude from Down to Earth Astronomy. You mean Down to Earth Astronomy? <laughs> Climbed up one of those skyscrapers. Actually, I saw a Down to Earth Astronomy release a new video today, and I do recommend checking it out. It's pretty hilarious. He um, uh, sort of went outside the atmosphere of the ship of the um, of the planet, and the ship landed on space. And then he was able to deploy his SRV, relog, and then uh, just be a little SRV in space, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, uh, now it is time for the disembarkation and hopefully I have the right suit on which suit do I have on no I have the wrong suit on okay can I get back in there okay this is bizarre I want my exploration suit with the dope jumping um, I'd also be interested what, what what suits do you guys like um, I am really into the Artemis suit in terms of its um, like function but I love the look of the scavenger suit. The combat suit, it's okay. I like it. If you want to be a space marine, that's definitely appropriate. What is going on here? I got a floating SRV. It's amazing. It's chitty chitty, chitty chitty SRV. <laughs> bang. <laughs> chitty chitty leap bang. Woohoo! Can you jump on your SRV? Yeah, I can walk all over it. This is great. Now, if what would happen if these turrets activated? Would it launch me into space? Alright, um... How the hell do we get up there? Okay, maybe... <laughs> this is such a weird experience! I feel like I'm going to fall... No? 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 Okay, can, can we go an external cam so I can really get a good picture of what's going on here? Oh, I can't jump. I can't jump in camera mode, probably.
Okay, uh, can we just exit the external camera mode? We want to go to the behind view. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> what is going on? Yeah, the Maverick suit, I think, looks dope. Uh, the exploration suit has, like, to me, the, the jump pack is great, and I love the look of it, but not as much as the scavenger suit. And um, the combat suit, you know, again, it's not bad. I do like the fact that it has um, uh, two weapons. Hey, see you, Raid, and thanks for, um, thanks for joining, too. Look at that data stream of uh, jetpack juice. All right, um, let's get serious here. Now, it is kind of weird. I am running, but I'm not able to run, even though it looks like I'm running. So let's see if we can get on that ledge. I'm probably gonna, oh, you know, I can just, I'm just like, if I die on Mercury, then it will boot me back to um, another system. So we must not die. Yeah, I don't think we're getting up there. All right, you know what? Where'd my SRV go? Oh, okay, there it is. It's just it's just floating. I think um, I think it is time to check out another place in Seoul. Uh, specifically, what I'd like to see is the engineer here and see how their base is holding up. Because um, while this is sort of like whoa, what was that? Oh, cool. Uh, well, this is a like a procedural base or whatever, uh, the engineer bases are all handcrafted and then hand placed, and so obviously um, with the detrain generation, they're going to have to go in and sort of replace all the assets. When we get to Alioth, you'll see that um, something might be missing that normally is there at Turn of Metallics. All right, um, where's my ship? I think it's on the other side. Let's just SRV through this crazy area here. Okay. Uh, all right. This is going to be interesting. Okay. It's going to be interesting because I, for some reason, don't have any mouse control. <laughs> oh! Ow! 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 That hurt. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know if they reset bindings on this again, uh, but I find that some of those things that were working for me before are not working anymore. C'est la vie. C'est la mer. And you can see some, some roads there under the train. And the train in Mercury does not look the same as other um, beautiful Odyssey trains does. So it does lead me to believe that, again, we're, we're in an area that is um, not really meant to be explored. Uh, okay, so what do we have to do here again to... Board, move to ship, okay. So, wait. Do I have to then request a docking? And then... Board. Oh, wait, what? Proceed to nearest garage. Okay, I am in garage. Board. Wonderbar. By the way, I didn't know that you could do that for years. <laughs> Someone told me, and I'm like... Oh my god, every time I've been undocking in a city, I just have to blow up my SRV to get back to my ship. Um, Alright, so the next thing that I would like to look at is an engineer. I'd also like to land on Europa, but we can do that on the way back. And then of course, the mysteriously permit-locked moon of Triton. Could also land on Charon, if you want to check out some Pluto stuff, although I'm not sure if this will ever load. It did not the last time I was here, but I was... Oh, wait, there it goes. I just wasn't here long enough. Check out Charon, folks. Now, there are no um, facilities on Charon, and again, it's, you know, don't judge anything here as, like, this is what the soul system will be in uh, the final um, iteration of Alpha, because this is all areas that we're not supposed to be in. We are doing some very naughty, naughty exploration. But yeah, let's go check out our soul engineer. And who, who is the soul engineer? Is that Laurie Jameson? Which, yeah, I guess, is the descendant of the very famous John Jameson. 
who, as we all know, uh, delivered the mycoid virus, poisoned the Thargoids. And wait, we got another ship here. Hold on. Who be that? Oh, Dark Heavy 8, you got here. Okay, you got an ASP. I wasn't worried about you. The jump range. I miss ASPs. Alright, uh, Dark Heavy, let's head to um, Decker's Yard. Wait, and then I guess Decker is not Laurie Jameson then, is it? Hold on. Uh, engineers. Where is Laurie Jameson? And hold on. What happened to Professor Palin's picture? Interesting. Interesting. So we get Bill Turner. We get to see what he looks like. Marco Quint, but mysterious. Uh, Laurie Jameson is in, oh, Shinarda Deersra. So then, who is the sole person? It would be Decker. Colonel Briss Decker. Oh, right, 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 right. As you can see, I've got most of the engineers, except I have not unlocked um, a few of the uh, colonial ones. Uh, the Sarge I still need to unlock, and then, of course, um, these guys I don't even have, um, like, intros to. Like, this one, I, oh, this one's Colonia, so I probably never will. <laughs> um... I don't know. I mean, if they have a taxi to Colonia and I can just sort of leave the system on overnight <laughs> while the taxi... I really want to know how that's going to work. <laughs> like, do you just, like, yeah, I want to book a taxi to Colonia and then literally it just, you know... Uh, uh, oh, escape vector. Uh, literally, uh, it just jumps you out there in real time. Is that going to take, like, eight hours? Like, well, how does that work? And I am fascinated. Fascinated. Um, so, hold on, let me catch up with the chat here, because I've been a little blind here. Uh, can I make a st quick stop at Earth? Yeah, let's check it out. Why not? Let's check out Earth before we go bother an engineer. I would like to see if maybe, uh, maybe it just says you can't land on the moon, but we can break that. I do have an episode planned about that, just so you know. No spoilers, though. Um, and do I speak French if I'm in Canada? Uh, how how should it, how how should I say uh, no none? <laughs> I took like a little bit of French uh, in in school because it's like required um, here to appease the, the Quebecers. Um, and look, it's a lovely language, but uh, it never really I guess clicked with me. I can say things like le pamplemousse est dans le bibliothèque, le le bonhomme de neige, uh, sacré bleu, uh, tabernac. Um, uh, qu'est-ce que le fuck? Qu'est-ce que le fuck? That's, uh, where is the seal, by the way. Um, but no, I don't, I don't speak French fluently. I did switch to Italian by the time I got to middle school, or high school. And, um, uh, uh, Italian I got a little bit further in. It's a little bit easier than French, I think, with the conjugation. Um, but, uh, no, far from fluent. I would love to, um, relearn it, maybe at, at some point or another. Get back into it. The planets in Seoul look very nice with the new planetary tech. Yeah, um, I think everything in the game looks pretty incredible um, with the new planetary tech. I'm very much like, that's, I think, one of the, the, the features that they've always had is just, like, building this interesting universe that is real and realistic but accessible. Um, and then, obviously, you're amazed at the sense that there are billions of planets in there and they're not, like you know, completely weird uh, No Man's Sky monstrosities. <laughs> I love No Man's Sky, by the way. I'm just saying, like, um, it's incredible how they strike that balance of, like, realism and then, like, this just massive procedural generation. And I have to say, like, for, um, for Odyssey Alpha, the one thing that's really impressed me more than anything, more than space lags themselves, is the actual planetary um, generation. Uh, there's been so many moments where I'm just walking around on a barren planet and I kind of look up and see a gas giant up in the sky and the way the hills go and it's just like this moment of like wow right which I would imagine is kind of like if you were a real space explorer those would be the moments that would you know drive you to actually do space exploration because why else would you <laughs> wait a minute there's a another commander here with a triangular dot who is also here commander Curlab. I have no idea who that is but we've got we've got a visitor <laughs> Maybe we're going to get interdicted and ganked in Seoul, where we're not supposed to be. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, 
Will there be different jetpack colors? I like the rainbow colored one in No Man's Sky. Now, actually, I think that would be a logical way for them to make money off arcs, right? I would actually love to see... Um, uh, one thing you haven't seen is if you go into the Hollow Me, is you're, you're like, I, I've bought all these, um, bought all these, like, suits, but there's nowhere in here to equip your lovely jacket. And so I wonder how the clothing is going to reincorporate um, during launch. And then will there be things like jetpack colors or, or, or gun customizations so you can make your gun look all weird? Oop, hold on, let me get out of this mode. Ooh, okay. This is looking pretty good. So far, so good. Okay, let me just go to camera mode. Remember all these new bindings. Uh, how do I lock it now? Yeah, okay. Uh, that would be this key? No, this key. No, this key. No, this key. I forget how to do what I'm supposed to do. Okay, out of camera mode then. Um, I mean, this is cool. Put there. Hold on. I gotta turn on orbit lines for. Wait, there's no orbit line for Earth. Okay, there, there it is. There it is. Okay, just don't go below that thing, and you won't smack into things and die. Okay. Is that dark heavy? So there's India. And you know, it's um, I wonder if they are very accurate in terms of like, because you can see like right there, it looks like there's a little bit of flooded area. Is that a, is that a thing right now? Can you drop a bomb on Russia for testing? Um, I'll drop a bomb on them. I'll drop a an info bomb that that maybe at this point in uh, human history there is no more Russia. I mean, you got you got basically three stations out here, Abraham Lincoln, uh, Lee Kuing Zhao, and uh, Gorbachev, which kind of implies that uh, maybe Earth nations are no longer a thing anymore. So, dropping a bomb on Russia? You don't exist anymore, Russia. It's 330-330 whatever year it is. <laughs> is it 3307, I believe? But let's, let's, oh, I want to go up a little bit. I would like to see a little bit of Europe. That would be nice. Looks like North America might be nighttime. Now, if they can only let us land atmospheric. There's a lot of hurricanes right now. Are those just like normal clouds? The day will be when we can land on Earth. And what's going on here? That's some weird loady effects. I'm just curious. <laughs> Why not? No, that didn't think that was going to work. But man, the day they add landing on atmospheric planets, and especially landing on Earth-like worlds, this game will have, you know, where does it go from there, right? What, do you, what, what else do you do? You st I guess, you know, base building or something. Um... That's Bangladesh bound to flood in the future. Well, that's what that's see that's been, that's what I'm wondering because like you have the, the 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 ability to project where the continents will be a thousand years from now, right? And so you know, have they built uh, Seoul accurate, right? Like I noticed. Um, I'm gonna try the moon as well. I noticed when I was um, in the galaxy map here, like Jup Jupiter, you're having some issues there with your textures, but like. Jupiter seems to have a ring system as large as Saturn. And, you know, I remember reading an article that, like, Saturn's rings will eventually disappear, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's 330 whatever Obsidian Ant says it is. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I wonder, like, would Jupiter's rings have expanded by 3307? Will they diminish or are they bigger than they are now in Elite? And is that scientifically accurate? Because I know that the developers seem to be very um, sort of science-minded, so it does make me wonder, uh, um, you know, um, whether they've you know modeled everything after actual future projections, or if they just kind of said, well, you know, we'll just give Jupiter rings and make them 
you know, better for gameplay or something? Or do they really put that much thought into things? I mean, this is Soul, right? If you're going to put any thought into any system, it's going to be the Soul system, right? And, okay, we are going to test this at warp speed. We're going to see if we can break through that permit lock and land on the moon. Okay, I think I pooped myself a little bit. <laughs> that is kind of fun and scary at the same time. Now, like, you know, it's like, why, why permit lock the moon? And I assume, you know, whenever we can land on it, I'm sure there'll be, you know, the Apollo 11 site, and I'm sure we'll have moon bases down there. But, you know, it's just like, uh, it's been a mystery, right? They never really explained why you can't go down there. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Who's that? Who is that? Federal assault ship. A want? Wait, what? I'm being attacked? <laughs> okay, apparently you're not supposed to go to the moon! <laughs> okay, emergency! Emergency! <laughs> Run away! <laughs> okay, uh, get rid of heat sinks. Go, 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 go! It's charging! Oh my god. Okay, we don't have shields, just put pips to engines. Okay, flight assist off. We're going to do a spiral. Make it confusing for the NPC. Oh, we're coming, missiles! Do not have chafe! Running away! <laughs> oh god. Heat sink malfunction. 16% hull! Go! Oh. <sighs> Okay, okay. So that's why you can't go to the moon. <laughs> Do you want to check out this un unregistered comms beacon? Okay, let's get those shields back up. Sixteen percent hull. And again, reminder: if I, if I die in these systems, it's gonna warp me all the way back. Oh come on, loot! You you gave an F. That was premature. Don't you don't you have any faith? Don't. <laughs> okay. Don't answer that. Let's see what this unregistered comms beacon might have to say. Now, these are usually the ones I think that like every hour on the hour they kind of spit out some Morse code. And actually, look at the look at the time. We've got about ten seconds to capture this. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet for a second. We're gonna listen to this. Let's see if there's anything coming from this. Whoa! <laughs> Let's maybe try honking? Hey, 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 watch it here! Oh, those shield effects are so nice. <laughs> You're getting a little excited there, Dark <laughs> Okay, well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe this works in the main game and it's not working here. Maybe it transmits on the half hour. Uh, maybe, do you have to scan it with maybe a data scanner or something? No, that does not work. Uh, well, I'm out of ideas. But um, these things do, and what it'll probably do is spit out some Morse code, and then you have to go get the, that translated so that you can get a cipher, so that you can go read a book about Greek mythology, and then some point after that, you know... Uh, uh, maybe it'll lead you to another signal where you have to do it all over again. Uh, okay. Oh, thanks, Dead Star. Uh, and by the way, hello, uh, SP4H. Uh, welcome, 07. And uh, Dead Star, yeah, thanks for the uh, um, kind words there. Last video took a bit of work, um, but I was very happy with it. And um, I'm glad you enjoy. Okay, this is another thing where, like, hold to target, right? But then, like, you click on it, and it kind of, like, moves the mouse. It's very annoying. I assume it's probably, like, optimized for console people who aren't even getting this until uh, Q3. And I'm sorry if you are a console player and um, and you're not able to play Odyssey until a long time from now, because that, that sucks. But one day, one day you'll, you'll be allowed in. And at that point, everything that's uh, notable will have a discover a, a walk-on tag or whatever. What do they call those? First, first feet, uh, the first feet notification or something. 
Um, that is the that is a question I have for you guys. Is like um, when Odyssey Alpha comes, the first thing I thought is, okay, where am I going to be the day on launch, and what am I going to try to walk on first to get a tag on? What are you guys going to go for? So I can. Uh, um, steal your ideas and do it first. <laughs> I, I, I still haven't worked out yet what I want to prioritize. Because I figure, given the tenacity of the players in this galaxy, you know, you might have two or three spots that you would love to do, but you're going to have to pick one. And I guarantee you, by the time you get to that second spot, it's already done. Um, yeah, but, uh, well, thanks, thanks, Deadstar. And yeah, I'm also looking forward to knowing where the hell it goes. I kind of have, like, a vague idea for the next episode and how the, I guess, like, the first Odyssey episode will go. And obviously, if you saw the last one, the resolution, I'm not going to spoil it, but, the, you know, at the end of the episode, obviously, there's an implication there. I have kind of an idea for how that's going to get out, but um, it was very different from, like, last fall, um, the situation, first football. Thank you, Phil. Um, but last fall, kind of like the situation we were in was like we didn't know anything about <laughs> you're gonna walk on sag A. Okay, well, uh, good luck <laughs> if you if you can. You know, you will be spaghettified. But you know, been there, been there, done that. It's not so bad once you get used to it. A random spot in deep space. Yeah, I think that's that's a safe uh, bet um, where you're definitely going to get first fall and probably a lot of first full fall. I would love to do. I don't know. I'm thinking like. Like again, like a Thargoid site planet might be neat, um, and definitely I'm I'm keen to see how those Thargoid sites look and those Guardian sites especially. Um, you know, are there areas in the bubble as well? Maybe a, a notable system or a very high traffic system where there are planets you can do football. That'd be cool. Yes, I do love the neck movements in in um, Odyssey loot um, and doing missions. Yeah. Uh, missions I really like in Odyssey. I actually like, even though they're they're still a little janky in the alpha. Like again, it's an. <sighs> See here, I'm about to say it's an alpha, but like here's my real view on it. This is not an alpha. We paid some money <laughs> to join this quote unquote alpha, and after the alpha finishes, it's like less than a month before the game releases. That's not an alpha. Like. I played RimWorld when RimWorld was in Alpha. I think I got in on like Alpha 4 or Alpha 5, and there were like 28 Alpha phases, and then it went to Beta, and then it went to Launch. Where's the Beta? If this is an Alpha, where's the Beta? What we're really playing is like something that's kind of half a Beta, and kind of half like a marketing tool and tool to set expectations. That's kind of how I feel about it. Oh, I'm going too fast. Loop of Shane time. Um, <laughs> oops. <laughs> Uh, but it feels like it, it, this is kind of like, like weirdly about setting expectations and kind of like showing things off with obviously some focus on testing, but I don't feel like it's an alpha. I mean, they can call it what they want, but, um, you know, I've played other games that were in alpha and were much, much earlier. Um, and, and it was a much, much longer phase as well, right? I don't know. It's just different. Oh god, RimWorld is one of my favorite games. In fact, um, Tynan Sylvester, the game developer of RimWorld, one time I got banned from their forums, and I'm like, why? What did I do? Did I say something bad? And I actually emailed them, and I'm like, yeah, like I don't know why, but I got banned from your forums. And, and it was the game developer himself who said, oh, yeah, sorry, it was like a runaway spam filter. Don't worry about we'll unban you. And I'm like, oh my god, I've been... I've talked to the, you know, the Braben of Rim, RimWorld. Which to me is like, you know, that guy is super... And he's a Canadian as well. Um, a Montreal guy, right? Um, so Frenchy. Um, well, maybe not French, but in the French area. Um, just a fantastic game. A fantastic developer. Um, the information that he was constantly relaying during the development. Um, the care that he took into the game. And then the fact that like he would even be involved in the forum. Like, like personally. Not like... You know, uh, oh, I've got my team of, of um, you know, forum. Too fast for orbital cruise. I'll show you too fast for orbital cruise. Oh, come on. All right, I gotta go through a cooldown here. Um, but yeah, I think RimWorld is a fantastic game. I thought a lot about doing a RimWorld series. It's kind of like a tougher game, I think, to for me to figure out anyway what I would want to do with it. Because I wouldn't want to do just like watch me play RimWorld and talk about it. But. Um, 
I don't know. I've always wanted to incorporate RimWorld. In fact, I had an idea at one point where, um, and it never kind of uh, materialized, where like Spatula would hit an atmospheric planet and then it would transition to RimWorld. And his character would in the game would be Spatula and then build a colony, build the ship, and then you know builds an asp or a python or something and gets off the planet. The problem is, I even though I've been playing RimWorld since like Alpha 4, I've never once beaten it. <laughs> it's a very hard, unforgiving game. But that's also because I refuse to not do it in Iron Man mode and with uh, Randy Random and at least a medium difficulty. Like, I won't play Peaceful Builder on that game because um, it's the... To me, I actually think it's a brilliant game in the sense that, like, if you embrace tragedy... <laughs> <laughs> like when your entire colony gets, you know, sort of murdered except for one guy, and that one oh shoot 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 that one guy has to sort of keep things going. Um, what have I done? What have I done? Yeah, I mean, believe me, I'm I, I still love RimWorld. I don't play it that much anymore, um, though not because it's like not good. I just kind of um, played a lot of it, right? Okay, I think I see something down there. I'm going to hope that this is what I'm looking for. I don't even know what I'm heading towards here. But that looks like a light. And if there's a light, it's got to be society and civilization. Yeah, this looks engineery. Yeah, Decker's Yard. We got it. Okay. But yeah, if you guys have not played RimWorld, honestly, one of the uh, it's one of those games where the money you put into it, you get back, uh, you know, tenfold, right? Okay, so what we got we got biodome civilizations here. Okay, this this doesn't look too screwed up. Um, again, these are like you know hand placed assets, but they're a little bit like you know sunken in the terrain, but it's nothing. Oh, well, you see, you know what the problem is? I don't know what it's supposed to look like, but definitely um, thinking that this should not be sunken. And that looks like a bridge, which implies there might be a canyon. Or wait, what's that? Is it a landing pad? Actually, let's let's uh, let's land and let's let's show you guys what an engineer looks like in Odyssey. Proceed to landing pad zero six. Okay, where is landing pad zero six? Um, um, wait, what? Okay. Where is landing pad 06? It's apparently behind me, right? Over here. Is that it? That could be it. So why don't I see an 06? Oh wait, I do. It's just very blue. Now you can see it. Okay, there we go. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I swear. Okay, Are you guys ready for some hot engineering preview demo secret action? Okay, what am I stuck on? Seriously? Okay, it's going really fast. Really, why did I go so fast? Whoa. Did you see that? It, like, the whole place just lit up. Well, see, that's that's what I was afraid of, Divine, is that, you know, some of these landing things, uh, or, or uh, landing pads, could be very well uh, underground, <laughs> uh, based on what I've seen otherwise. All right, so watch this. We're going to go to Hangar. Touchdown. Now, I actually think, like, um, this is pretty cool that engineers have their own little sort of different uh, facility. But again, I'm, I'm assuming that we're not supposed to be here. It's probably uh, probably not finished. So don't judge, just enjoy and speculate. All right, disembark. So this will be how people get engineering in the future. <laughs> the future. So obviously it's got your know, standard docking, but instead of elevators, there's just a little you know, storage area here. Oh, what's this all about? Well, it's just engineering materials. Some, a member of my team has been killed. What happened, Dark Heavy 8? What did you do? What did you do? <laughs> did 
Did you try and engineer yourself a, a bounty? And look! There's a little side room here. And you can see... This is Colonel Briss Decker. Nice to meet you, ma'am. She's got kind of a shiny face there. Have you been have you been vaselining yourself, ma'am? But uh, you know, they've got the little side room here, I assume for their you know, that's a little padded sound recording booth for their, all their engineering commercials and you know, a nice little area here with some spare boots in case it gets rainy, some canisters. Empty trays, just waiting for materials to be put into them, which is why they need you commanders to deliver their engineering. And then some data. I mean, I don't know if this is nonsense and just like, you know, cool graphical stuff, but I do love these um, things that will sort of, it seems that they are capturing images from the, um, the planet, right? No invite, base was there, but shot me down. Hmm. I'm always so. willing to make time for my repeat clients. Let's get started. Oh, I, th that's kind of, hold on a second. Acknowledged. Okay. What do you need, a little Just bit of gender confusion there. It's just a, a male voice, but looks like a female body type. Um, so yeah, uh, this is where you pump in and get into the engineering and try to do this, and you can kind of change your your stuff here, right? Actually, do I have uh, experimental effect? I don't have an experimental effect on my um, thingy. Well, what could I do? Deep charge, uh, increasing your power draw and your max fuel per jump. Ooh. Or mass manager. Ooh. Ooh. I think we go for this one. It's not going to do my jump range. So look at that. I actually managed to get engineering and there was no crash. Like, even though I'm not supposed to be here, this did work. Um, but yeah, you'll find that this is basically a, every engineer kind of, it seems, has this layout. Which, again, I, that, that's one thing that I'm really hoping is that this is sort of like, hey, this is a temporary thing, and uh, we will be adding more station variety. But no, they haven't said anything uh, to that regard. Uh, so we can't assume it. But even if it's not on launch, maybe it will be at some point in the development's uh, future that we'll see, you know, different station types and different um, uh, varieties, right? Because one thing I do love is um, just about, you know, visiting engineers themselves. And that's a bug. Oh, what? Oh, that worked. Um, one thing I do love about just, like, visiting the engineers themselves is just the, 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 the cool, unique bases that they have, right? Uh, I just want to see what happened to my jump range there. Did it go up? Oh, it did. Wonderful. Well, then we've been very productive here. Too bad the alpha will end in all... All must, all things must go uh, the way of the dodo uh, when it comes to these spin-off universes. So uh, there is one more thing that I definitely wanted to do um, in Seoul, and it's not um, look at Uranus. Uh, it is to land on Europa, which uh, you know is uh, interestingly another. Ooh, there's a nice big city there. It looks to be on the, the bright side, and Fung's claim. You can just go look at a random settlement. Fung's Claim, Illy Enterprise, and Chagraf. Chargraf. Chargaf? Chargaf. Yeah, let's check out this city. Um, but Europa is, uh, you know, the moon of Jupiter, where they suspect there is water, and um, might even be more colonizable than, say, Mars, uh, based on the abundance of it. But, of course, you have the, the, the radiation from Jupiter itself, kind of... Um, Making that a little bit... Yeah, robots could colonize it. We don't need to go there. We can just build robots and have them colonize Europa. And build giant lead bunkers. Everything. That's, all, that's how you do it. Of course, you know, by the time you get to the facility, all the robots that have built it have turned into Skynet and start killing you. And then uh, you have, like, Earth versus Europa conflict. And then that's how AIs got banned. Or at least, you know, I'm not... Sure, on the actual lore for how AIs got banned, but I'm sure it was something like that. I do want to look more into that and, like, how did that happen? Because, um, obviously, in the lore for Elite Dangus, <coughs> or, sorry, Dangerous, really, um, in the lore for this universe, uh, AIs have been banned. But how? They never explain how this happened. Right. We're not going to get anywhere if we don't first get away from this planet because of gravity. 
But I think we will go uh, check out Europa, and then let me know in the chat if you do, if you guys want to see anything in Sol, like like um, if you want to take another look at Earth, you want me to go to Mars or uh, check out Venus, uh, just let me know, and happy to uh, do that. And then I'll probably jump over to Alioth um, or Sirius, one of the two. And then after those two, my thought would be to try um, maybe even getting to the Founder's World. But of course, for that, I will need more more jump juice. Though, thankfully, we managed to engineer our jump drive. That was unexpected. A lovely coincidence. But yeah, other than that, uh, let me see here. Lots of people online but most people in private groups come to open come to the dog side <laughs> and of course what what would I yeah I have my own squadron apparently too if you want to join a squadron <laughs> I don't know why you would want to join my squadron it's called the dunt dunt or D unit uh, yeah what is it actually called yeah Dangus investigations okay cool that's what I thought it was and we are allied to the Tark wheel I believe yeah, the dark wheel. <laughs> so if you want to uh, join my faction and help the dark wheel uh, and find Roxla, go for it. Uh, checking out Europa right now. It rained a few minutes ago. <laughs> well, it's like, you know, we've heard a lot about Europa, but what about Europe B? Sorry, I'll, I'll, um, I'll show myself out. I, I, I even feel yeah like I, sh I should be punished for that joke that's uh, that's terrible <laughs> well, let's see here oh look at that there's a a moon called Rhea and then there's also um, the uh, the capital of the winters faction is a system called Rhea oh uh, do 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 because I remember yeah there was the diarrhea runs that Yamex used to talk about those were the, the the crazy crazy high paying passenger missions at are at Rhea I'm not sure if those are still a thing. It's hard to keep track, honestly, with what gets nerfed. Oh, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not going to this city because... What is this? Europa Ice Geezers. Yeah. I think that's what we need to do. In fact, that's the thumbnail for this stream, so that's very appropriate. Is we're going to get ourselves all wrapped up in some geysers. Or geezers, whatever you want, whatever pronunciation you want to use. Okay, let's get to nice, comfortable. What eight seconds? It's like I always, you know, you always do the O seven thing for uh, coming into stations, or you can do O six if you are, you know, um, a little daring. When you're dropping in on a planet, you definitely want to uh, ease back a little bit. Otherwise, you're smacking in the atmosphere. But yeah, we're going to get a nice, beautiful view of Jupiter as we come in. I don't know. What's your favorite planet in the system? I mean, other than Earth, obviously. Uh, for me, Jupiter is definitely uh, high up there. So yeah, maybe the system map just makes the rings look larger, because here, like, they look about... Well, maybe even still a little bit larger than I would imagine, but... Hey, I've never been there, so... Now, the other thing is, is there a Great Red Spot? Because the Great Red Spot on Jupiter, as you all know, is um, just a giant storm. And how long is that storm going to last? Maybe, you know, a few thousand years, but... Is that maybe what's left of the Great Red Spot there? Or maybe it's on the other side? But yeah, it's interesting to me that the Great Red Red Spot will uh, will be gone in a few, you know, generations probably. I don't know what the science says. If you're interested, go go look it up. Damn it! All right, now let's see what these Europa ice geezers are all about. Because I have uh, this is this is exciting. I think Dark Heavy. Oh, did you go to the city? Yeah, sorry, I switched on you at the last minute. I believe me, I know the feeling of like when Plater or like Squirrel are streaming and I'm trying to keep up with them and there's a stream delay and all that stuff. And then you're just like, and then you have instancing issues and it can be super, uh, super frustrating. Uh, 
Do I have a... Oh, are you... I hope this is on the surface. I think it will disappear over time. It's been getting smaller in the past few decades. Well, imagine, like, a hurricane on Earth that lasted... Um, like, like, can you imagine, like... Imagine, like, you were born and there was, like, a hurricane and there's still a hurricane. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy to me. And, oh, yeah, okay. They have kind of made the scanner a little bit more not so pukey. That's cool, actually. Probably should play around a little bit with that. I'm not going to hit J to disengage because that's disingenuous because I'm going to need to go into glide mode to get down here. I mean, I'm kind of curious to see what will happen, but I feel like it's just going to spit me out and then I'm going to be... Uh, stuck having to go back into super cruise where did my night vision go here we go all right so we are arriving here at the europa ice geysers and then, i'm just gonna tell you i've already seen what geysers will do in alpha and um we're gonna have a good time That's <laughs> but we're also gonna scan this tourist beacon because uh I want to hear the I want to hear the lore. I want to tell me about the geysers. Who discovered them? Uh, what are they all about? Who uh, who loves them? What are you saying here? Um, favorite planet is Pluto Charon. I know it's not a planet anymore. Bite me. Well, first of all, Charon is a moon. Oh, it was never a planet. Uh, hold on, sorry. Let me not hit the ground here. Um, you know, Pluto. Pluto. I I I think is a great planet. And yeah, I said it. I said it. Because of a crashed anaconda down there. Wait, what? Tell me. Tell me more. What is this uh, crash anaconda all about? All right, so let's read this. Uh, tourist spot 0571. Icy geysers, also known as cryo geysers, will generally have liquid components, but instead be composed of will have little liquid components, but instead be composed of volatiles with dust and ice. So these are not your dad's water geysers. These are um, icy mud geysers. <laughs> Sounds promising. All right. Well. Let's find ourselves a geyser. And actually, yeah, loot. tell me more about that, because I kind of want to see maybe if there is a cool uh, crash ship to check out down there. That does sound neat. Okay. So there's the beacon, but where's the geysers? Anyone know where these geysers are in relation to the beacon? Maybe they're right close. Like, you would see them by now, right? Although sometimes these geysers will um, take a while to cycle. So maybe there's just not one firing right now that I can see. Without, yeah, without night vision I can't see anything, so that's not going to be an option. I wonder if camera mode will be... If, yeah, great. Uh, signal lost. Yeah, what is blocking me? Seriously. I'm going to start Twittering at the developer. <laughs> I'm going to start tweeting at them, and every time the camera mode blocks out, they're going to get a tweet. And there comes Dark Heavy 8. Actually, yeah, could you shine that light around? <laughs> That's great. So, like, here is the beacon, but I feel like maybe with the terrain generation, the geysers are somewhere not here? Uh, Dark Heavy, yeah, to just, just, um, scan around, or maybe let's, uh, you know, can you take, receive me on your ship and we can, <laughs> we can do a job. Just, just fly me to the geysers, taxi. Oh, right, I don't have um, yaw and pitch. Okay, here's a nice little spot for the SRV to sit. Okay, if we can't find geysers the old-fashioned way... No, 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 Let me see here. Um, let me just read the chat here. Um, so my favorite planet is probably Venus. I got a thing for high pressure atmospheres. Venus uh, fascinates the heck out of me, and I do love the fact that, like, you know, they drop probes in it, and by the time the probe hits the ground, it's already toast. It's a turbulent, volatile planet. But what was it? What was its history? What happened to Venus? 
Um, and then Loot says, um, Oh, is that Cold Zaw? Okay, I was gonna say, I'm like, you, oh, okay, I guess you could find me because I'm on the beacon. I have no idea what, uh, my bindings are in the SRV. Oh, there you go. There you go. Um, but let's see here. Uh, a few years ago, right after Horizons launched, I landed on Charon and found it. It was kind of scary at the time. Horizons was out, so everything was just new. Yeah, when you stumble across, um, a random crash, those are definitely, and I'm scared. Okay, what's going on? I love the sound, though. Um, maybe they moved to New Planet Tech. That is definitely um, a possibility. Or maybe um, they work best when daylight hits them. Scientific, accurate, elite, dangerous. Yeah, that, that's also a possibility. Is maybe they're, they're day geysers, not night geysers. I'm not really sure. All I know is um, I was hoping for geysers. I wanted to take a little bit of a ride, but uh, no geysers. Now, again, um, keep in mind, it's uh, it's not an area that we're supposed to be in. Oh, yeah, I'm like, I'm not in camera mode. I'm in, like, turret mode. We're not supposed to technically be here. So I can't really expect that they would be, um, you know, adding all this stuff. Let me try scanning it with my SRV and see if maybe I get a different message. And it's like, haha, fool, this tourist beacon got you down here. Now you're part of the tourism economy and we can claim Europa's GDP is growing exponentially. Ha ha! Geyser seekers. Maybe there's one down here. But, uh, loot, was that, uh, that ship that crashed, that wasn't like a, like a POI sort of thing, like a John Jameson crash site. This was more like, um, it's more something like, hey, uh, or one of those randoms, right? I see something down here on the scanner. I think it's worth checking out. And I mean, like, hey, if I could stumble across some niobium. Yeah, we're going to turn down some niobium. I swear, if I'm seeing on the on the scanner and it turns out to be <laughs> dark <heavy> here. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, too, if, because, like, your own ship will show up on the scanner, right? It seems to be centered on you, but maybe not. I don't know. There's only one way to find out. Let's go through this lovely terrain. Now, this is something that does concern me, is outside of the flat areas. Oh, my God, the terrain is very difficult to deal with. Uh, yeah, that was definitely the ship coming up on my radar. Oh, well, no geysers. I'll tell you, man, I gotta write to this tourism board and tell them that Europa ice geysers, it's just like, you know, it's like when you go to a, you know, you're driving on the interstate and you see a museum and it's like, uh, check out the remains of Bat Boy. And you get in there and it's like, they don't even have like, uh, you know, Bat Boy's fake remains. It's like they have like his, his shirt or something. And this shirt was worn by Bat Boy and it's all the remains. Damn tourist trap. Paid six dollars to get in here. <laughs> Just gave your ship a little boop there. Uh, it was during a Raxla search. Oh, of course. And, uh, how did that turn out? Did you find Roxley? <laughs> of course I know the answer to that is... I couldn't tell you if I wanted to. If I told you I'd have to kill you. So, by the way, uh, check out up, up above where it shows you there. Um, maybe not the Armstrong moment that we were hoping for, but certainly better than the first iteration, where at least now you get, like, a bunch of information about where you've stepped out. Um... Still, like, yeah, if you just say, like, oh, first footfall. No. No, no, no. An Armstrong moment is, like, soaring music. And, you know, I like how No Man's Sky does the stupid aspect ratio thing and just kind of cuts it into widescreen. That's kind of neat. Um, obviously, you can't do that because uh, you'd just be copying them. But, uh, you know, at the same time, something like it, right? Um, is that a gun? Hello? Um. <laughs> what do 
what would happen if I went like... Don't shoot me. <laughs> ah! Are you shooting Jupiter? Don't shoot Jupiter. What has Jupiter ever done to you, man? Okay, well, hold on. Let me see. If that's kind of fun then. Okay, I haven't tried this gun yet. That's cool. That is kind of cool, actually. I've only tried the other, um... I do like how it kind of is a little bit random. That's cool. And then what pistol do I have here? No, just the normal one. And then of course, I have, uh... Let's figure out what you're all... <laughs> just shooting the ground. But, you know, just like out here on a random planet, Europa. Uh, and, um... You know, sort of you know, in the SRV headlights and shooting Jupiter. It's like this is this is what this game is all about. It's blaze your own trail, right? Um, let me see here. So, uh, can you get to the Pleiades system and visit a Thargoid structure? No, unfortunately, no. Um, the way this is sort of working, the way this glitches. Um, you know, why can't I get in here? Is this my SRV? Yeah, that's me. Uh, the way this works is basically the, the permit-locked systems, if you have the permit for them, seem to be accessible. So you can get to Sol, you can get to Alioth, um, you know, um, let me, oh, not combat mode. I want galaxy map. Or actually, you know what, hold on, let me get back on my ship, because if I try to plot a route in SRV, I'm like, don't stand in front like that. Oh, oh, is there someone on top of me? That's called Zaw. Oh, hello, sir. I thought that was like my SRV turret. I thought <laughs> it's like okay. This is where I'm kind of curious. Okay, what happens if I do? Oh no! Don't, don't die. I want to unleash the turret. I'm like, I wonder if the turret moves and like you could whack someone off your SRV with it, right? Wait, what? g -Man, you've seen a video from a Thargoid structure? No. No. But like, in Odyssey? Uh, cause like, if that is the case, hmm. Um, well, anyway, uh, let me get back to the ship and I will show you, uh, what it seems to be doing. Oh god, I thought that was a hill in the air and it was just a crate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe some people figured out how to get to Thorgard structures. I think the problem with that, though, is that you would have to be finding a Thorgard structure in a permit locked system, which, to my knowledge, I don't think exists. But, um, you know, like, my knowledge is not a deep reservoir of information, you know? Okay, uh, board the ship. I still don't know why it shows a picture of an anaconda, uh, no matter what ship you're in there. But, again, it's uh, early access. Um, so, now that we're in a diamond bick... So, you can kind of see, like, here if I try to just, you know, plot a system to, you know, random place, it's going to give me, um, rooting errors. Wait, hold on a second. What's that? Yeah. So, root unavailable, root unavailable. But, if I put in, let's say, Alioth, and I'm in the soul system right now, then I can plot a route to Alioth, but as you will see... What it's actually doing is, uh, because we're already out of the um, the mini bubble, is it goes from Sol to Vega, which is another permit lock system, all the way up to Exabur, which is another permit lock system, and then Alioth. So right now, like all that's um, accessible, right? 
you saw it posted in one of the discords or, or the the broadcast of most animus. Please, please, if if you can point me to where we can go, uh, I would. Wait, what loot? What? The COL sector is open right now. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? There's no way. If I only have a thousand light year jump. Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> My diamond bag goes far. I mean, like, if there was a neutron star, like, could I get to Jackson's lighthouse? That's the only, um, Jackson's lighthouse, the only one uh, that's in the bubble. No, I cannot get there because it's not permit locked, unfortunately. Um, but there's no way the COL 70. Uh, 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 uh. No, stop with the thing. And go get, uh, damn it. <laughs> Goid Homeworlds? Well, that, that would be what? Um, Miyaki. Miyaki is the uh, spelled M I A C K E. And it's not in um, Elite Dangerous, but was in Frontier uh, First Encounters, right? And there was a mission where you had to go to Polaris, where you docked with a Thargoid shuttle and the Thargoid shuttle takes you to the home world of Miyaki and uh, you do a mission for the Thargoids and if you succeed they give you a Thargoid scout and um, if you don't know Drew Wagar, I've seen him playing uh, Frontier First Encounters he obviously went through Elite um, the original and uh, definitely stay tuned to Drew Wagar because I, I, I thought, well, I should do that because there's literally no video online of the Polaris missions, but you can find a walkthrough on some old sites. Um, it was posted in Brocast Discord. Okay, give me a second here. I'm just going to leave on the map while I check this out. Uh, Brocast Discord, okay. Uh... But where? Is it in like the bro bar? I need to know. Uh, I don't see it in here. Brocast Discord. But like, I don't know what what sub channel. There's like five million of them. Uh, is there one for Alpha Chat? Okay, hold on. Maybe it's that one. Thargoid Unknown Structure. No fucking way. Oh, so I'm thinking what happened here probably was the person was there. There's only 27 views on this video? What the hell? So I'm guessing this person was there when the transition happened, like when the screenshot was taken, and it just didn't move them to Nervi initially. Interesting. Um, it's really dark. I really wish it was better quality video, but okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how to put the video onto the stream right now, but interesting. Interesting. Well, I think let's look at Alioth. Let's go check out Bill Turner. I'll show you some fun uh, glitchiness there. And then we'll figure out one more thing to do after that. And then uh, probably call it at that point. Where, how do I launch again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> how, how easy we forgot. Um, hello. If you want, do you want an invite, uh, Cold Zal? I'll invite you to the wing. Uh, invite to team. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of disappointed there were no geezers here, but uh, that's fine. Again, we're not uh, not worried that uh, that will be the case on launch. It's just alpha madness. Okay. Yeah, I'm just doing one last check here. Kind of want to just see if there's any. Straight geysers. Geysers. No, they're probably under a hill. Alright, to Alioth we go. Which Bill Turner is that? That's a good question. Uh, let's just say, like, uh, 
have like a, an inkling or an idea, a little bit of a plan to how that's like going to be explained a little bit better. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it yet because that will be probably. I don't know if it's going to be the next episode because like I, I, I'm going to stop talking about it because uh, I don't want to spoil it. But yeah, that's really cool. I, you know, but here's the thing. So maybe the Thargoid structures, maybe this guy um, logged back in and was in the system before it sort of got moved. But I have a feeling that like um, they, they're probably like just importing assets um, from the old game. Like they're not probably like refreshed assets, right? Like why would they put brand new Thargoid sites and little Thargoid critters and all that stuff into... Uh, the game, but then not let anyone see it. Like, I, I don't think there'll be anything there that's, like, different or representative, other than the experience of, like, walking around and, and, and seeing that stuff on foot, which will be super cool. Um, let me just see, make sure... Oh, yeah, so there are crash sites here. Minor wreckage. So, all sorts of cool stuff, and, like, you know, normally in, in exploration or whatever, you find that stuff, and it's just like, okay, cool, there's something to check out. But, I want to go to Alioth, the Alliance homeworld. Another uh, system that's just as interesting as Sol. Sol might be interesting to us Earthlings, or Earthbound, or Earthborn uh, creatures. Uh, but Alioth is, is just as important in terms of the, the scheme of uh, uh, sort of Elite Dangerous as a total, uh, and the whole plot kind of thing, right? It's obviously the, the capital of the Alliance, which is an interesting faction in Elite, where... Really, you know, the Federation and the Imperials both have their own ranking system, their own custom ships. The Alliance did not even have their own ships until the Chieftain line. Um, and it's not really um, a proper military. It's sort of a collection of independent um, uh, uh, sort of uh, systems all working together. As opposed to sort of a, a you know, you know, oh, this is the one with Misty River Surgery. Okay. So I've been to Expert before. Or, sorry, Vega. Um, but the other interesting thing about the Alliance, in my opinion, is number one, uh, if you've watched the California Conspiracy, is their activity in the California Nebula and the implications that they might be a Thargoid sympathizing faction or might be even maybe working with the Thargoids in secret. Um, who really knows? But uh, that's sort of the implication. Or the, the, so the rumors go, and everyone knows the rumors are true. Who said I was born on Earth? <laughs> well, I, 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 you know, I'm Earth born, and that that is lore for my, my well, not okay. Spatulas, uh, at least descended from Earthborns, right? Whereas the law, for example, is from the Neptunian colonies, which was a you know a sort of sub French colony that that happened. You know, uh, it, probably Earth born is if you go back far enough. But the uh, the spatula, spatula's lineage comes can be traced directly back to Earth. Though, Spatula himself is not uh, a part of the Federation. I respect no faction. Alright, yeah, I'll watch these um, Thargoid site videos after just to get a taste for them. That would be so cool to visit right now, but yeah, I... Even with a Neutron Star and Jumponium, and I doubt you would get more than... You can't get more than, like, a, you know... I don't know, what is the highest jump range? Like, can people get up to, like, 300 a jump? Well, maybe Fleet Carrier... Wait, wait a minute. Fleet Carriers have what? Like, a 500 jump range or something? I, I Well, I can't afford one. That's the that's the, sort of the problem there, but maybe one of you can. You take a fleet carrier to the Pleiades. If there is there a permit lock system down there? I don't think there is, actually. Dang it. Alright, so here we are in Alioth. And you can see here there's a ton of historical beacons. You can go check out, learn about uh, Bill Turner and Mick Turner and Meredith Argent. Uh, and learn about the Cakers. The Caker Coops. We want to go to Turner Metallics. Let's see what else here. There's Turner's World. And so, yeah, Tom Cotterson was the guy who was killed uh, over a food coupon. 
Pilots Memorial, one of those are here. Donaldson Station was recently in the news being uh, attacked by the NMLA, or so they say. Uh, Wicca's World was pretty prominent in um, Frontier First Encounters. There was like a band called like Jagged Banner and like a Wicca's Wear Races. So you like had to get something to Wicca's World in like a certain amount of time. And the only way to do it was to like turn off your auto computer and travel faster. G Vine, 337 light years? Okay, that's, that's a pretty big jump actually. <laughs> Wouldn't mind being able to do that. Um, Riley Dane's Murder. Gotham Park, I like that because I like Batman. And then Urgent's Claim. So this used to be called New California. And Turner's World used to be called Fruitcake. I'm not kidding, It's called it was called Fruitcake. And then it changed to um, Gordon's World before uh, you know Mick Turner and Meredith Argent took over the system and uh, named planets after themselves, those you know, vain bastards. So you can see here, it's kind of weird because it looks like what Frontier has done, you can see every system around here requires a permit and these are not... Per so what it looks like they've done is they basically permit locked every single system in the game um, and then given everyone the permits for the systems they wanted you to be in. But if you already had a permit to any of these systems, you can obviously get around that permit. So that's how we're able to do uh, what we're doing today. And I find that it's, it's interesting. It's like, like basically, they just permit locked everything. <laughs> That's one way to do it, right? Ah, Ghost Draft's video with the jump conda. Man, yeah, like Ghost Draft has done um, some stuff that just has blown me away in terms of like number one, the places that they've been to and just found these really interesting places and these crazy, crazy. Um, builds that like you know um, get you to places you would never think you could get to um, but then also those guys are hilarious I love Ghost Draft I just felt bad because I'm like oh they, they usually stream at, at um, I think 3pm on Saturdays and I decided to start doing it um, to make sure you know I think it is like the best actual ideal time like a Saturday at 3pm the majority of people across the world that's like you know you're, you're not doing too much in terms of plans, right? But then I'm like, oh, I can't watch Ghost Draft stream because I'm streaming. But maybe maybe one day I'll start, um, as I start getting into this, like really, I started streaming uh, around, you know, when the Odyssey um, Alpha started coming out. And I hadn't been streaming uh, for a while since like the old days when it was like CQC streams. So I'm kind of just getting, you know, reset up and re comfortable with streaming and building up all my, the, uh, bad habits and all that sort of stuff but um you know as soon as i get to the point where i'm, I'm a little more in the in the in the groove because you know uh, it does take a while i think to sort of rebuild those those muscles uh then maybe i'll start getting some other people on the streams and have like guest stars and do joint collabs and that sort of fun stuff get yamix on the stream and just you know try to discover um new expletives or something <laughs> I was watching actually a little bit of Yamix's um, the stream this morning, and I think it's like every single stream I've seen of Yamix lately, he does like this like rant um, where he just goes off about swearing. It's like, oh my god, it's funny. He making me laugh. And yeah, one thing I'm really disappointed is uh, you know the whole stupid you know uh, thing that's going on this year, and so I won't be able to go to LaveCon, but I went to LaveCon and met. Yamix and Ascorbius and uh, and uh, Grey Test and, and many other um, you know elite um, people, uh, some creators, some just players, uh, and some uh, dare I say developers, uh, all very wonderful people, and um, I look forward to being able to eventually do it again, but not yet. All right, I just did a little bit of like a loop of stream, but beautiful recovery, so all is well. And wow, that looks like a nice little canyon. I'm very curious about that. Yeah, actually, I'm really curious, like, when they were... <laughs> Please, no Yamix. <laughs> oh, but I love Yamix. Uh, he's, he's actually a wonderful guy, despite his, uh, you know, controversy, right? Um... The fastest ship, fast favorite is the fastest ship of the galley, Viper, that can go 932 miles an hour. Oh my god. 
Oh my god. That's pretty fast. And is, is it really a Viper? Is that, uh, to, to, like, not the, um, what's it called? The Imperial Courier? Which I've never flown, by the way. There's still um, many ships. I've never flown any of the Chieftain variants. I have never, well, I've flown an Anaconda and a Federal Corvette in a beta. So not in the real universe. Um, I've never flown the Cutter or um, the Clipper. I have not flown uh, a T-10, although you've flown a T-9, you've, you, you, you've flown a box, you can fly a <laughs> bigger box, you know. Um, I haven't done the Imperial Courier, and I think there's one more ship that I haven't um, flown, but I can't remember it right now. Uh, the Vulture. The Vulture. Which surprises the heck out of me, because... But here we are at Turner Metallics, and uh, as you can see, um, the big giant canyon that's normally right where I'm pointing is kind of not there. And you're going to see some weirdness as we get down there. <laughs> so Turner Metallics obviously has these um, giant mining uh, facilities that are here to uh, extract goodness and materials from the ground. Yep, we are at maximum glitch. The Imperial Courier is a really fun ship to fly. I, it looks like it, actually. That That is something that I've been wanting to um, uh, do. I was going to kind of try and plan an episode that would force me to be in one. Um, I also really like the Dolphin. It's a ship that, like, I don't fly all that often, but really do um, enjoy. Um, at least with that one, you know, I do some low-key passenger missions or something like that. But yeah, normally there's a big giant uh, canyon here, and so the landing pads will all be like... There's even some landing pads down there. Like, there's one right there, but like, there are... Um, let me see if I request docking... And why? Hold on a second. What's going on here? Let's see, I gotta find by Star Stone Enterprise, Pleiades Resources, Bounty by Bill Turner... Oh my god, what have I done? What have so many bounties? <laughs> Landing pad one. Okay, so I think that's probably the one over there. But yeah, there are some underground... Um... No, I'm not going to land on the landing pad because I don't need to do that. But yeah, you can see the uh, if you watched my uh, latest episode, this is the area um, where I filmed it. Just right down in here. Yeah, I did not think that would fit... <laughs> Now I am... There we go. And let's roll out SRV. Um, meters per second, right. Uh, what do you say there, G-Mine? Uh, I haven't flown Cobras, Imperial Eagle, and Federal Corvette. Oh, the Cobra, I think, is a wonderful ship. Um, for me, that, that was like the mid the mid-game sort of ship and changed my life. Loved it. Hey, Loot. Yeah, no, no worries. I'll, I'll, the stream won't be too much longer, but thank you for joining, and, and thank you for sticking around. And enjoy the rest of your dengus. I do love these, like, nuclear coolant towers. Uh, Dolphin's my primary ship for exploration. I find a lot. Definitely can recommend. The word overheat will not be in your vocabulary. The only thing that overheats is my passion. <laughs> So here we have a, a very interesting floating defense grid. It does look like the turret is kind of taking a little bit of a spaz. Let's see if we can get in there a little closer so you can see what I see. Well, see why I hate this stupid camera. Okay. Oh, now it's now it's fine. Okay, make me look stupid. Will you turret? All right. Uh, yeah, no, the bases were handcrafted. So that's the thing, is like these are not procedurally generated bases. These are handcrafted and hand placed, and Ian Bond apparently is probably getting shot somewhere. Uh, so yeah, they're going to have to recross the bases before the 19th. But my, here's my suspicion, right? Is they probably have already done it in another build. And what they're letting us play with is probably a much earlier build of Alpha. They kind of hinted as such when they said, you know, this isn't the actual terrain generation. This is an earlier version of that build. So, you know, I kind of have this this feeling that um, 
you know, they've already got a lot of the things worked out in another build. So again, they're sort of setting our expectations with this alpha and then testing aspects that they knew they needed testing. Like, how does the planetary terrain uh, system work in general at scale with, you know, all these different pieces of hardware? How does, what are players going to do with this type of mission or what isn't going to work about X, Y, and Z? But I have no doubt that um, we're not seeing what the extent of what they have. You know, like, there's going to be a lot more uh, stuff that's already in their toolbox. Because why would they do that, right? Like, oh, yeah, we, we've got, like, you know, two more weeks on the alpha. Let's just go and, and put out the release date for, like, next month. You know, they're, they're, that's going to put a lot of pressure on them to scramble for the month. They're doing that because they know that they've already got, like, 75% of the work done. Right? That's my theory, anyway. And I'm sticking to it. Uh, what are you saying there, Dead Stars? Uh, 932 meters per second is equivalent to 2,000 miles per hour. I mean, you gotta be in a real hurry to go that fast, right? How fast does the um, space shuttle go when it goes up into orbit? orbit? And is that a faster speed or, or more? Uh, actually, let's just see if we can get... I want to see if we can get into this. Um, oh, here's another big change. I don't know if you caught that, but it said local bounty as I'm... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we, got, we got a rogue SRV there. It said local bounty, right? And then watch as these the, the little quote-unquote Armstrong moment goes up there. First of all, surface tensure, 500 degrees Kelvin. Ouch. Um, oh, it didn't tell me my wanted status? Okay, whatever. But that was something that was very interesting to me in the sense that, you remember we were talking earlier, is um, uh, in the legal system in Elite, when you commit a crime, you've actually done nothing wrong. It's your ship that commits the crime. In fact, even one step further, it's the modules themselves. So that fuel scoop that you were carrying is, you know, an accessory to a murder, right? But you as a commander, when you leave your ship and go to another ship, you're not wanted anymore because it's the ship that commits the crime, not the commander. But now, when you get out of your SRV and you're wanted, it actually says, you are wanted. So that also kind of implies that there might be some changes in the crime and punishment system. No? Am I reading too much into that? I don't know. <laughs> I just saw, like, a tire, like, like whiz across my face. Oh my. Kind of good, good sustain on that actually. Good sustain. Okay, let me get back in. I feel like 28, yeah, 20. Yeah, I was gonna say miles per hour. I'm like, I am uh, Canadian here, so we don't use that um, miles thing that I think one country in the world does. <laughs> um, 28 kilometers per second is orbital speed. Hi. Oh, 28 kilometers. Per hour, okay. So what is that per second would be like 2.8? Which is still like orbital speed is like, that would be, oh, that's well fast. So close, so close. Okay. Um, uh-oh, uh-oh. What's going on? Am I falling or, wait, can I just drive up the wall? Is that how physics works? Ooh. Dark Heavy 8, come, uh... Oh, hold on. What have I done? Hmm. Carriers can't jump into permit lock systems either. Oh! Please help. <laughs> I'm stuck. What's going on? I'm stuck on this rock. But look at those textures. Impressive. How lovely. Yay. <laughs> oh, I love the derpiness of the SRV. Um, yeah, I want to get on top of this thing. I wonder if you could land on top of it and then... 
and then uh, um, disembark. But I want to go into the nuclear cooling tower. Make put me in. Put me in the tower, chief. Oh, 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 oh. Right, because if you get too close to a landed ship, then your turret's still. But if that ship just departs and hovers above the ground, no problem. It's really the landing gear that triggers all of that, right? Oh, 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 okay, okay. Too far back. All right, we're running in for a jump. Did I go too fast? Too fast! <laughs> okay, hold on. Just don't land. And everything will be alright. There we go. Here we go. Nice and easy. Alright. Alright, elevator going up. Um, 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 um. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Okay, give me some shields. Give me some shields, man. Whoa, hold on. Let me just find a better spot. Okay, there we go. Handbrake. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, I love stupid shit in this game. Uh, according to Wikipedia, circular orbit is 6.9 to 7.8 kilometers per second. Wow. But you don't feel it. All right, here we go. We are in the nuclear reactor. Excellent. This isn't so scary. <laughs> no big deal. Now let's disembark. Let's see what space legs are like inside of a live nuclear reactor. What's down here? Ah! <laughs> it's the smoke hole. It kind of looks like the James Bond uh, gun barrel in a sense, right? I kind of like this, like folded, uh, the folded <laughs> triangles, right? This is awesome, actually. I feel like um, I want to recreate the ending of that terrible um, the Wolverine versus Deadpool. Oh god, no, what's going on? Oh, there's just a little crevasse here. Um, now I'm stuck. I can't jetpack. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Typical spatula, getting stuck in a crack. Um, okay, hold on. Let's explore all options. Can you wedge me? <laughs> I wish I had like a grappling gun and could just like grapple up there. I mean, let me put it this way. I know I'm not supposed to be an alias. I know I'm certainly not supposed to be in an engineer base and then certainly not supposed to be inside of a nuclear cooling tower. So this is my fault. I'm not blaming anyone. Hold on. Maybe we can crouch. I feel like I got a bit of movement there. The art is how do you get unstuck, right? Getting stuck is the easy part. Hold on, what if I try... Uh, let's try a rocket jump. Oh, oops, sorry about that. I did not mean to shoot you. Rocket me, boy! Like, I don't have landing gear to turn on and off, right? Alright, I'm gonna time my jump with your rocket. Oh, I, I don't mean to keep shooting you, I'm so sorry. What? <laughs> this is scary, getting missile shot at face. <laughs> Yay! my SRV though. That's the unfortunate thing. Bye bye SRV. Because of course, you know, 
if it's just sitting out there, it can't be put anywhere. Incident report. Let's see here. Jurisdiction, Bill Turner. Interesting. Bill Turner has his own jurisdiction. Destroyed by Kolza. Le legal status clean. So that mean I'm clean now? It's going to re redeploy me in Seoul. Really? Interesting. Um... <laughs> Yeah, of course, Cold Zob. Bill, did, Bill Turner didn't like me shooting in his base. Yeah, I, believe me, I, I I had the same problem. And wait, what the hell? Did it just saw me on my feet in the middle of where am I? Oh, this is the um, this is Europa or no, not Europa. It's a uh, Decker's. Um, it's the engineer that was out by Saturn. I want to say. Um. Okay. It didn't even like. Okay, let me just sail my ship, right? Ship not in range. And I can't hail a taxi because I'm in a settlement, so... Um, you don't have any energy cells, so basically you've got 98% power. <laughs> if you, you're going to die. Critically injured. See, do you go to the wonderful hospital of the gas giant? That would be lovely. If you were injured and you woke up in a hospital facility... That implied that you're not a hollow me uh, and had a beautiful view of a wonderful gas giant. I think dying would be a much more pleasant experience. More people would want to do it. But as it stands, um, God knows what, what, what the intention of it is supposed to be. What really gets to me is this cognitive dissonance that I get where I'm like, okay, so when I'm killed in a ship and my whole ship blows up, I guess I'm jettisoning as an escape pod being instantaneously thrown across the universe to wake up in another area and all I have to do is pay to get my ship back with all oh what the heck uh, with all the modules that were engineered and yeah come come fetch me cold and I'll, I'll just get into your ship because yeah I am I am I am friggin stuck here <laughs> though I'm kind of curious where this landing pad came out of this was not here a second ago um, but yeah, this, this is the cognitive dissonance. It's like, okay, like, you, your ship is destroyed, and then you magically warp over, and they, you know, if it was just like a stock ship, hey, here's your stock Python, but no, it's, it's repaired with all your engineering intact, and it happens instantaneously, right? But then you get shot on foot, and it's like you've been critically injured. You're not actually dead, right? So what is it? Do you die? Do you not die? What is going on here? And what is going on here? That's my question, is how the heck is... This a thing. If I look down, yeah, this is uh, it's kind of, it's cool. It looks like I'm on the launch pad, but really, I'm not. <laughs> I do want to see what this thing over here is. It looks like a biodome, and um. Just being able to go on foot by a biodome is actually another little uh, check off my box of things that I wanted to do and see if the uh, the interiors of the biodomes look a little bit neater. Because obviously, for some filming purposes, um, I've gone close to these biodomes and sort of like tried to get a shot inside of them. And you know, previously they were, you know, they look spectacular from afar, but when you they weren't meant to be um, closely inspected. And I wonder now that everything is, you know, ground-based, have they redone the textures on these? And more importantly, can I get in there? <laughs> yeah, they try hard to explain game mechanics with lore. And look, that, that, that's cool, I, I don't mind that, but... Um, it's like... You know, if, if it's... Oh wait, oh okay, I thought for a second I was just about to get into the bio, the biodome here. Look, I like that they take the lore seriously and whatever. Um, I, I think, you know, like that, that's, I'm cool with that. But it's like, I guess that when you don't really do a good job explaining the lore, that's how I feel. It's just, you know, it's like when it comes to like dealing with the death rebuy insurance thing, they haven't really clearly defined what's happening and stuck to it. And now you know, five years later, they're introducing new mechanics and it doesn't seem to align with that because they didn't have a clear uh, explanation in the first place anyway. But yeah, um, again, I'm not judging this because it is, again, we are in the soul system, which we're not supposed to be in. 
But these trees uh, do not look so healthy, let's just say. They look like big, giant, lumpy, gooey textures. Um, so probably nothing done in terms of like biodome redesign. Or at least not in the, the version of the game that we are uh, currently seeing. Which is you know, early and bugged and <laughs> allowing me to get to places that I should not be. Hey Phil, yeah, get, uh, thanks for joining, by the way. And look, uh, um, uh, have a have a uh, uh, pleasant dream, sweet sweet dangus dreams. Oh, I, I have a light. What am I doing? Oh wait, that's gonna drain my battery. Never mind. That's why I didn't turn it on. I want to go see that uh, that thing over there. Oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. I'm probably gonna die. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. shields. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that pro, pro move. Now, one thing I wonder is if they're ever going to do directional shields. Like, you know, front shields, back shields, side shields, whatever. To me, when I think of multi-crew, what is a multi-crew person doing? Uh, being able to change the direction and intensity of the shields. So like, ah, oh, power to forward shields. Great role for multi-crew. I would love to see that. Wonder what else is coming uh, after we get, you know, sort of the initial launch of Odyssey. Like, what's next, right? What's going to be the, like? Obviously, they'll be tweaking it and fixing it and polishing it. But what will be the, the the features in the next two or three years that we can look for? Maybe even in, in you know expand expansions or DLCs or I don't know. I don't think they're doing the season pass thing again because that didn't go so well. Um. And Coldza is saying, yeah, we can change our holomy on the fly because it's just a hologram, but now we are real people, it's not just chairs. But that said, I can still go into my SRV and change my face. So, what's, what is it? <laughs> are we holomies or are we people? <clears throat> if we're people, like, you know, you should have to log out and then log back in to change your holomy, right? Which is a big thing that I, I wish they would do is, you know, I'd even... Heck, I don't tell Frontier this, but I even pay money to have multiple commander slots in the same account, right? But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the, it's those kind of inconsistencies where it's like, you know, no matter how much world building you do, no matter how great, um, you know, everything is designed, those pieces will always create that little cognitive dissonance where I'm always going to look at, like, you know, like a commander and go, like, you know, I'm always going to look at, it, at at the legal system and go... You know, did I just commit a crime or should I should my ship be punished? And you know, am I a commander or am I a hollow me? But I don't know. I feel like Frontier had probably some really good ideas about lore um, initially. Like I feel like the people who initially worked on the projects really had some interesting visions for the lore. And then I feel like later on that just sort of became less and less of a priority. Uh, they went more towards like features and trying to please everyone with certain gameplay. Oh, hello. Here you are. Yeah, this this building does not look that interesting. It's a cool building though. Um, but yeah, it does feel like like um, you know I'd I'd like to to know that like the, the, when they're developing the next sort of um, round of games. Hold on, let me just smack. <laughs> I wonder how that looks from the inside. Uh, but when they're when they're developing the next few patches, I would like to know that they have um, some sort of, um, I guess, like like a respect for the the, the lore, or so like ambition with the lore. Uh, shoot, where is my ship? I don't even know. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me look at my Gallup map. Is it still an Alienoth? Is that where do I find this uh, again? Another thing, th th like like I'm so confused. Oh yeah, all my uh, ships are there. Um, well I don't know. Where, where do you want to go? Do you want to go to maybe Sirius? Want to check out Quint? And I think yeah, maybe we can call it a night at um, Marco Quint. That's where I'll end off the stream. But yeah, so Odyssey launches what? May 19th. Um, man, I am 
kind of racking my brain to figure out what is I want to do first. I think the first thing I want to do is get first footfall on something cool, right? So I'm going to start putting together lists of like what I want to look at first. I definitely want to look at a Thargoid site. I definitely want to look at a Guardian site. So those are high on the list. I'd also love to go, I think, on an exploration binge, right? Like, I don't want to go too far out of the bubble, but go like maybe a couple thousand light years away. Um, just do some legit new exploration, try and find some new stuff that they might have added into the game but wasn't a thing. And I'm probably in a blue tunnel of death right now, am I not? I guarantee you, like, this is weird multi-crewness. Because I'm like... Hold on a second. Yeah, I don't know. This is not good. When it does this, it's usually a crash. <laughs> if I crash... That would be the perfect way to end the stream, actually. But, um, yeah, so exploration, I think, is pretty high on my list because I think there'll be a lot of cool things for explore uh, explorers. Um, like, I'm kind of at that point in the game where I'm just like, I don't want to grind anymore, right? Oh, see, Giovanni, no worries. I'm, I'm literally on the way uh, on the way to ending anyway, so I appreciate you showing up. And, and 07, I'll see you in the black. Um... But yeah, I'm like, uh, you know, it's like, aside from the exploration, like, I, I'm, I'm done, like, grinding. At this point, I will I'll just say 4-3. I feel like it's just blue tunneling, but also not yet crashed. Like, it still seems to be recognizing what's going on. Though I can't access any of the menus. This is truly bizarre. Eh. It's, it's an alpha. Or whatever. But yeah, um, I'm not really sure yet. Uh, well, sorry, what I was saying about grinding was just, yeah, I, I don't feel like going out there and grinding just for the sake of grinding. Of like, oh, I need 500 million for this. If I need 500 million for it and I, I don't have it, then okay, I'm not getting that. Uh, I'll just do something else. And when I am still... Um, yeah, it shows me still in soul. I, I, I still am in spirit. I will never leave soul in my mind. But I, I am hearing um, cues that make me think that I'm with you, which is bizarre. But, okay. I mean, this is probably going to crash. I just saw Dark Heavy 8's shields go down, so I don't know what he did, but probably is doing some science, and maybe some science was done back at him. <laughs> but yeah, I don't grind anymore. Like, at this point, it's kind of like, yeah, um, what do I feel like doing? I'll play a couple missions and just enjoy it and you know hey great my money went up right or or i'll find myself oh okay i'll go play with this person and then we do some bounty hunting and oh, hey my bank account went up that's wonderful um i just don't go out and like do it like the problem is like something like mining i and i hate to say it for any of the miners out there but it's just like to me like mining is always a grind like the objective of mining is always to make a bunch of money it's it is a nice activity it is relaxing to do you know, it's like I'm not anti-mining. I did enjoy um, the deep core, like void opal mining. That was kind of cool, but it always feels like a grind. It just never doesn't. Yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen. I think it's gonna it's gonna crash out for me. But I mean, that's cool. I mean, look, we saw a couple different engineers. To be honest, Marco Quint is not gonna be, you know, that different um, from the other ones unless his base is sort of screwed up by the terrain. <laughs> But uh, it is kind of neat how you now get to meet the engineers. Though my thought on that was like, okay, so like if seven people dock at the same time at the same location, they each go down into their pad and, you know, Bill Turner is going to be right there in a room on every single one of their docking pads at the same time. How is this possible? Unless there's more than one Bill Turner, <laughs> which, will get, which, which brings us back to the Dangus. Uh, yeah, no, mining is mining is really a means to an end. But you know, I'll I'll be honest, like that's kind of what it is. But oh, is, it is food bar. Okay, let me let me try quitting the menu and then I'll load back in and see if I can get in on um, multi crew. Oops, no, I don't want to buy arcs. Uh, main menu. At least it didn't crash, right? Like, and I was able to quit to the main menu. Like, I am actually impressed with that. Good job, Frontier. 
Hollow engineers, yeah, maybe it is where you're just you're never actually dealing with the ro uh, the engineer. It's just their robot assistants, right? Wait a minute, why is it showing a spinning diamond back? Is it gonna put me back in Alioth? This is so confusing. I am so confused right now. What happened? Well, that's the other thing too. Is with multi crew, um, the sort of theory there was that someone would hollow in, right? Oh, motherfucker, put me back here in the in the stupid bubble. Join another ship. That's what I want to do, but, like, can I... So can I now warp over there? No. No. Well, that's fine. I can just... I'll just move over there. Duck -dung. Okay, if Marco if Marco's base is really screwed up, I do want to see it then. Because these are this is a unique time. That was weird. There was no hold to. <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys know um, Joel Haver on YouTube? He really started trending recently with these kind of cool animation videos that he does. And um, there's one. He's got this little like sci-fi series, and that one is oh it hits my sweet spot. Um, and there's one called, one where like, it's like, uh, should we shoot the rebel ship, sir? Hold. Uh, they're going to get away, sir. Hold. And it just keeps saying hold. And then eventually they're, they're like holding hands. And um, every time I hear the word hold now, I just think of that sketch. He's a fun channel to check out. I think I appreciate a lot of his, um, his wacky stuff. So that's weird. So my Diamondback was in um, Alioth, and then it put me back in Seoul, and then after I crashed out and then relogged in, it put me back in the starting system in my Diamondback. So I think it's like the game does not know how to deal with you going outside of this mini bubble. Right? It's it it's really making the game think hard and long about itself. Which is good, you know, this is the, exactly the kind of stuff that we should be uh, doing. Although, what if the developers learn our uh, exploitative uh, bug creating tactics? I mean, are we maybe teaching them too much? God, I love the new jump uh, animations or whatever. I don't want them to fix these things so that I can continue to seeing things that I shouldn't see because that is part of the fun of exploration. But yeah, um, yeah, we'll check out Gwen's base and then I'll call it a night. But um, I will do, you know, my objective is to kind of like do this every week. Though there might be some weeks I have to skip, and there might just be some weeks where, eh, whatever. Or maybe I, I might want to stream something else other than Elite, right? Um, might try Star Citizen now that, I, again, now that I've got the, the new uh, system running, so I can actually, you know, play it without wanting to smashy smash. Um, before we broke the mini bubble, respawning worked 90% of the time every time. Well, see, yeah, I'm act it, 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 it was pretty worked out, but this is the thing. When, when you're delving into um, this kind of craziness, then anything is possible. And, and I actually would enjoy it more if it's like we totally break something because we were doing something we were not supposed to do. 200 kilometers above the base. That's, yes, that's what I expected as well, is you just um, respawn in your ship, right? But... I guess it took me to the last place that we docked, which was Seoul. But because Seoul was permit locked, it didn't want to move the ship, and so it just moved me on foot, which was bizarre, because then I'm like, I can't order a taxi, and I can't get my ship, so what am I doing? The Dog Star. Scarlet Corp. Oh, I thought this said Corpse Produce, and I'm like, uh, Corpse Produce? Excuse me? Excuse me? We're looking here, Quint Research Base. All right, let's see how screwed up Quint Research Base is. So, how did you manage to break free of the mini bubbles? You know, so uh, essentially, if you look here, everything that you're not supposed to go to is permit locked. But then you see, like, Soul is fine. 
the reason that you can go to these things is because they are permit locked systems. So, if you bought enough arcs, you unlock the next. Uh, the, that's like exactly. It's like if you if you do well enough in Odyssey Alpha, you unlock the beta, which has all these systems. But really, <clears throat> any system that you have a permit lock for right now is one that you can get to if you have the jump range. So I'm here in a 50 light year jump range Diamondback, and I'm able to get to Soul, Sirius, Beta Hydri, Alioth, uh, Exaber, Vega, uh, Ross128, and could probably get to Shinrarda um, if I had a jump booster or like a guardian jump thing or whatever. Um, but really, uh, the cool part is just checking out these like engineers and, and seeing that there is a little bit of some foresight into what you can do with these engineers in the sense that you can actually go talk to them in person, meet Bill Turner himself, um, which is kind of cool. But right now, yeah, the only systems you can get to outside of the mini bubble are permit lock systems because it looks like basically what they did was they just said um, let's permit lock everything except for the systems that are in the mini bubble and obviously if you already have a permit for something that is permit locked you can get there I assume that's how it's working and I discovered this trick from uh, watching uh, one of Plater's streams one morning and it was perfect because um, I was able to actually get some shots of Bill Turner and um, Turn of Metallics in the latest episode. And are you serious? I, oh god, I've got a guy trying to shoot me down here. Or I don't know if he's coming after me, but Neil Walker, I've been tracking you for a while now. You're mine now. And I mean, considering I do kind of have a lot of bounties. <laughs> All those bounties coming back to haunt me. Haunt me. All I want to do is check out these engineers. But of course, if they do blow me up. Oh, you know what's really cool is... Okay, hold on. Let me just uh, deal with this interdiction poorly, I guess. I didn't submit. What? Did... I didn't submit? What the hell? I did not submit there. I do not consent. Oh, god damn. And he's got missiles too. Okay. Oh, plasma accelerator is interesting. Flight assist off. Oh, it's on hold because my bindings are different. Investigating reports of a crime. Yeah, well, you do that, but <laughs> like right now, just get me out of here. Oh, that's cool, because yeah, I guess I am well liked and serious, or those green guys are here to help me. Thermal attacks. Get out of here. Stop it. Stop shooting. You didn't even take down my shields. And I'm in like... Oh. I had to say something. I had to say something. Well, here come the missiles. Okay. Let's dodge that one. Hopefully they are dumb fires. <laughs> yeah. Why are you still shooting plasma at me, man? My shields are down. Use your missiles. Oh, maybe they... Ow! Oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> uh, I do love some of the randomness that happens with these games. Alright, um... Where is it? I need to retarget it for some reason. And also put some pips to shields, so that when... <laughs> When I invariably am interdicted again, I don't... Like, 63%. Like... Oh my god, and he's back. Are you serious? The cops didn't keep you busy? I don't know why I submitted to that interdiction. I wasn't... I didn't lower my throttle or didn't, didn't think to do it. It might be a weird binding thing. Oh, I forgot that Sirius B was, um... Not a neutron star, but a, a white dwarf, I think. I wonder how pretty those are. Let's just give that a little bit of fly, but actually no, because I am being trailed by a madman who will shoot missiles at my butt. Probably need to get down to this planet as soon as possible to avoid being splattered on the pavement. Uh, 
Excellent. He's overshot me. <laughs> Sucker. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Speaking of overshot. Oh, come on, you... Okay. I'm not submitting because when you beat the interdiction, then they can't come back and haunt you because they get kind of depressed over the long cooldown period. But if you submit and then run away, they just basically come back into space and then continue to harass you to the end of time. So, you know, evade that interdiction by yourself that, uh, privilege of no longer how to deal with that guy. But I've had NPCs just, yeah, like interdict me five or six times in the same journey. And, yeah, it's like one interdiction, he brought me down to 63%. Yeah, I mean, don't want to deal with that noise. Alright, finally coming in on Quint. We finally got here. It's the end of our journey. <sighs> oh, 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 don't drift. So yeah, I'm like the um, Odyssey Alpha, I believe, goes until the 10th or something like that. They, they were originally going to do it shorter, but they did extend the uh, amount of time, which is really cool, because... Um, you know, it's, it's nice to play with it and, and check out new stuff, though I kind of feel like I have one more session in me before I want to actually wait until the full launch happens, because I just don't want to spoil everything for myself. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like even some of the stuff that's unfinished, like, I've given them plenty of testing, right? At this point, I kind of want to be pleasantly surprised when it launches and, and you know, not have experienced everything so that I, I still have... Um, new stuff to do, especially considering that, like, not all of this is, is, um, worked out like that. Oh yeah, Marco Quinn had one of those big spires. I think, who else is the other one? Felicity Farseer, I think, has also a very big spirey structure there. Oh yeah. This is, uh, interesting. Um... What's going on? What's going on, Marco Quint? You got some real feng shui going on. Oh, 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 oh. Ladies and gentlemen. And that's a dangus. What? <laughs> Why did you do this to me? I just wanted to see. Oh my god. Wait, it's gonna put me back here at Quint? Really? Is it gonna be that kind? <laughs> I, it's just like, I blew up so easily that it, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, look at that. Okay, first let's just go say hi to Marco Quint himself. That was fun. And that's nice, they, they spawned me back here. I'm, I'm very happy about that. So as you can see, exact same layout as before, the only thing is different than some of these TV screens. Which I suppose I don't mind too much, but it's going to get old eventually, so I hope they do have further plans to diversify some of the bases. Engineers will always be in this little auxiliary workshop, implying that it's not their real one. They seem to have the same layout, always a pair of boots there, so you know there's, there's no real proceduralness to this. Little workshop down there with some nice padded walls. And of course, say hello to Marco Quint. Hi, Marco. This court keeps me busy enough as it is. How much of my time do you need? All of it. Um, so yeah, this is where you do your, your engineering. Not gonna do any right now. See you later. <laughs> But you were just walking and saw an explosion. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what happens uh, when you're around me, is random, unplanned explosions. 
Uh, but, thankfully, it's not um, throwing me out of the system here. Oh, it's registering like 50 RAMs per RAM. So yeah, it wasn't my fault, really. It was the technology. I did everything perfectly proper. And it's uh, it's not you, it's me, right? Or I mean, it's it, it's not me, it's you. I blame Marco Quint. Uh, okay, do not repeat your mistake, though. I'm going to go... Land... Oh, wow. Yeah, they have really screwed it up, eh? <laughs> Look, there's just this landing pad. Uh... Okay, there we go. So yeah, this is interesting. <laughs> I have a feeling that the base is supposed to be higher, but then at the same time, these mining rigs are perfectly fine. Who died? See, I'm getting wig signals, but I feel like I feel like we're not instanced correctly because I'm not seeing unless that's yeah, that's not proper. <laughs> In all fairness, though, these, these mining rigs are super cool. I kind of want to try something. Get an SRV on the bridge, then get out there to explore. That feels like a trap. I want to try something. I'm going to put my shields on for a second. I just want to see what will happen when I kiss this. Oh, it won't let me in there. Really? Let me in. Let me in. I want to touch laser. Aw. Damn, safety features. <laughs> Look at this, though. Wow. That's nice. I've, I've, I've seen... Oh, that's even nicer. Wow. Wow. Okay. Super cool. I mean, I've seen some people complain about um, the sky and some of the, the sort of textures that has changed. You can sort of see less stars, but... Yeah, I mean... I'm not complaining. Why is the ground shaking, though? I feel like I'm on an earthquake. Uh... Oh. Well, now that I know what that's all about, then Dark Heavy 8, that sounds actually like a good idea. I want to try that. <laughs> uh, how do we get up on the bridges, though? That is the question. Hmm. Let's try going over this way a bit. If only I could keep the SRV going in a straight line for more than two seconds, that would be great. Yeah, I don't know. If, how do you get up there, though? That's. Wait, what's going on? I was like, what is that sound? Someone's shooting at me, and no, it's just a, a Tom Cook track change to a... <laughs> I think this is the, this is the party you've been looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought those were gunshots for a second. I was totally freaked out. Um, I'm not sure how to get up there, Dark Heavy 8. I mean, oh, wait, there's Cold Zaw. Well, that's the answer. Hey, uh, can you give me a lift? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, don't come down, don't come down, don't come down. I'm under you. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, we're just gonna get up top here. And note, we did not put pips to engines, and that's why we could not do that. Rookie mistake!
Oh, just you're a little high there. Alright, just set her down easy. Find a good spot and oh, oh oops. Hey, success. No 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 Okay. I thought I was on the ground there. Up up and away! We wanna get on this bridge here. Look at that pretty star there! Who's that? Alliance Crusader. I did try uh, getting out of my SRV while on someone's ship. Don't do that. Just, just, just don't. Never, never do that. Oh no, oh no, what's going on? location Lucifer okay so I guess it's putting me back in my ship and why does it change every time that's bizarre oh, I think um, again the answer is it is glitched because <laughs> we're not supposed to be here uh, oh I'm 422 kilometers up well wow. See, it's weird. That time it did what you would expect it to do, but it, it, this is not always the case. Um, okay, we're gonna do this. What? Uh. And now you're... Wait, what? What? I don't know what is going on here. I am very confused. <laughs> oh, but I'm having fun, and that's what that's what matters, right? Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, I'm going to get back to you guys and then um, wind down and kill this stream and then uh you know uh, get on with my day but i hope you guys have had fun i hope you've learned some terrible secrets about this universe and ultimately i hope that you stay dangerous it's very important of course so we want to go to quen It is a, a beautiful day uh, here in Canada. Actually, we've had really crappy weather all week. Um, it actually snowed, um, not this week, but last week, which was like, what? <laughs> it's April. Snow? Really? I know it's Canada, but like, come on. Seriously? But this week, we've got beautiful sun and uh, definitely want to get some outside time to compensate for all the inside time. Oh, by the way, do I have my SRV or did, did it just arrive? No rebuilds remaining. So, that's interesting to me. No rebuilds remaining. Does that mean that they are changing the stance and making SRVs more like the ship launch fighters? 
In which case, I am happy, because that's cool. Uh, many, many, many times. I remember at one point when I was filming uh, the Deep Space Dangus storyline, and this was about, you know, going to, uh, from Colonia to Sage, or Sage Teresa. Um, at one point, uh, the episode Lard of the Flies, I had to fill, it was all SRV based, and um, my SRV blew the hell up, and I had to actually fly all the way back to Colonia, and then all the way back um, to that system, which was sort of halfway between Sage and Colonia. So, super, super annoying. But if you could just resynthesize uh, your SRV, even a limited number of times, um, that really fills, I think, a gap. Um, you know, and I know the, the SRV bay where you have multiple SRVs, you can use that or whatever, but. <laughs> Half bridge to nowhere. This is cool, though. I mean, like. Look at this system. What a, like, aside from all the glitchiness. Oh, you know what? You could, if this tower had a base, I could, because I discovered you can zip up buildings um, if you can find the diagonal, um, the diagonal uh, crisscrossy girders. Oh, that's, that's okay, Cold Zod. I don't need an SRV. I just want to go. Well, actually, you know what? Let me, can you, can I, um, can you, like, lift up a commander on a ship? Or is it going to, like, insta-kill me? Let's find that out, and then that'll be... Whatever the answer is, uh, we'll determine um, <laughs> how this stream ends. This is science. This is, uh, you have a hypothesis, then you test it. So my hypothesis is, this is just going to kill me. But, it's that's just conjecture until... We run an experiment. So let's experiment. Mm, look at these lights. Ah! Wait a minute. What the heck was that? <laughs> I just came through your ship. Let's try that again. Wait. Was that ship interiors? Someone pause that footage. Someone pause that and do a screenshot and let's leak it. <laughs> ship interiors confirmed. Well, that's what that's that's what I'm wondering is yeah, if you could take that one SRV, but you know, you get X number of instances and Oh, here we go. So I mean, I'm not dead yet. I'm gonna put shields on just just to be sure. Kind of like, can I get into your cockpit through this little hole in your crate? The crate hole. What is this? I'm gonna crouch here, and your ship is like waving like a, a beach dolphin I'm trying to. I mean. I am alive, and the ship is buckling like one of those, like, you know when you go to like those western bars and they have like that horse that goes... <laughs> that scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I'm hiding from Dark Heavy 8 under this little flap. What? Wait, what? What exploded? I like this little hidey hole. Oh, wait. Hold on. There go my shields. What is shooting? <laughs> this is absolute chaos. Good <laughs> oh <my God>, camera mode. <laughs> Lasers or missiles. Wow. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. Alright, well ladies and gentlemen, I think that's that's gonna be about it for the stream. Um, I think ending on a, a senseless strange 
uh, I was gonna say death, but no. Critical injury um, is probably the best way to end it. Um, but thank you very much for joining. Thanks especially to Dark Heavy 8 and to Goldzaw for, for joining me in open and um, exploring outside of the mini bubble and getting up to some weird weirdness. Oh, it was Goldzaw himself. How were you shooting? Were you in your? Were you not in your ship and your ship was just bobbling on its own? Oh, the base was shooting at us. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That, that happens to me quite a lot. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, I will probably do another stream next week. So, um, you know, do the, the um, script uh, ascribe. And, uh, and then you'll get the um, notifications. Um, I think you have to also um, hit the bell like 17 times on and off. Also go into like some three dot menu and do something else. I don't know. You figure it out. You do what you want. All right. But um, I will see you in the next Dangus. Um, have a great, uh, yeah, have a great uh, rest of the day. Good day. <laughs>